I got my wrong glasses on. Huh. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the um, August 21st uh, select board meeting. It's now in session, and uh, we have a, a, a packed agenda tonight, so uh, I will try to stay on time. Um, and towards that end, I bought. Um, just suggestions uh, for us so we remember how long we're talking. These are three minute timers for the uh, other slide. And let's see if I can uh, beat the sand. Um, so with, with that, um, uh, who would like to start us off with uh, with public comment? Or, or not I public comment? Say something. Yes. Um, for those that are standing, there are chairs over there. Feel free to just walk around, get the chairs, set them where it's convenient, including behind. Here. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. You're welcome. Sorry, Andy. No problem. So, John, do you want to start us off with the liaison sure. reports? Um, yeah, I have a really important one, actually. Um, in my role as um, liaison to the DPW, I was invited to the hiring process. As you're all aware, um, Jeff Sager <coughs> is uh, going to be retiring shortly. Uh, September, I think. Is that right, Bob? And so to that end, um, the process was begun during the summer of gathering applicants for the position. Um, there was a lot of work done in advance, uh, internally by staff. Um, I was invited to join in the, the interview process, which I did, um, I believe we took two, two almost half days last week um, to do that. And um, we actually had exceptional internal and external candidates, well, that's good. Um, which is that's great. really, really good in my opinion. Um, uh, and I will say this, that um, every one of them, you know, was highly capable, good. which is, you know, rarely when you're in the interview process do you find that to happen. Um, and. Um, after two days worth of interviews and discussions among the uh, members of the interview team, uh, which I probably should go over with you a little bit so you have some idea who that was. Um, let me see. I know, Bob, you I might, uh, I might be able to help. From yeah, could you? You could do it from memory. Maybe. I have it on file. Uh, Rick Stinson was the, is the Wakefield DPW yeah. director and was very, very helpful, yeah, especially with the Reading Wakefield relationship with DPW. Um, our HR director, of course, Judy Perkins. Um, Gene Delios joined in part of the process. Uh, Greg Burns joined in the whole process. Joe mm -hmm. Huggins, facilities director, mm -hmm. joined in, as I did. And then um, two fellows from DPW, th three were invited, one couldn't make it. <coughs> Arthur Menendez is the DPW union president. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter, <coughs> Peter Isbell is the water sewer supervisor. So those um, comments were uh, all very important, and I would say, from my perspective, um, the three DPW people in the room, two from Whiting, one from Wakefield, had the largest say, you know, as they should. Yeah, yeah, and we really kind of designed, you know, in advance the interview process to reflect that. Yeah, because you know the most important questions were going to be asked by those people who actually work inside of that department. Um, I can tell you that among a group of um, a total of five exceptional candidates. One um, literally distinguished herself uh, among from the pack, and I'd like to introduce Jane Casella, who's our new DPW. Said yes. Stand up, Jane, and we can uh, welcome and, and, and thank you for accepting the position. Good. 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 Thank you, Jane. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, easiest job in the world, I'm sure, in the summertime. <laughs> Jane did an exceptional job in the interview process, and that was no surprise to me, and really distinguished herself among a very strong field, and I know she'll continue to do that and as she elevates to the next level now you got to you know first job you got to replace yourself uh, so you know that'll be you know that'll be a you know something that she'll be looking forward to a um, couple of other pieces of business that I did not see on the agenda um, that I I'm going to take this opportunity to bring up 
Um, one of them, um, as you're all aware, um, there was a open meeting law um, complaint that I actually filed against the board. Um, and I wanted to just report to all of you kind of where I stand on that. Um, I received a letter from uh, from the board, even though, I, as you all know, I was asked to stand away, uh, which I, um, retrospectively thinking, not sure that was the best idea, but it's the one that I followed. It was the advice of counsel and did so. Um, frankly, um, the letter that I received had a, um, it was an explanation of Ray's findings. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I just want to, there's a couple of things that I wanted to say. One is that I believe that um, Ray's findings were probably somewhat out of context from what actually happened. Just a personal opinion, that's my observation of what happened. Um, I understand he came to a conclusion based on a set of facts that he had. Um, I think there was absent facts, but that being said, um, I'm very respectful of Ray's work, and I understand how he came to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, received a letter from the Attorney General um, outlining um, their analysis of both Ray's response and laying out options for me to go forward should I choose to do that. Um, I will tell you this, that um, the letter I received in paragraph two, I'm sure you all got a copy of the letter. I th is that letter? This is Ray's letter? Right. This is Ray's letter? This is me. Ray's letter. Yeah. yeah. It's actually from the board. So, you know, I, in, I just have to ask you, John, are you speaking as a, uh, a the, the complainant who was a private citizen or a member of the board? Um, I think that it's very hard, difficult to separate those two, but I am speaking my reaction because I recused myself as a member of the board. So I would probably best characterize what I'm saying right now, not as a member of the board, but as a citizen. But this, it, you know, it's kind of a blurry area. So bear with me for just a second. Um, well, the, the only thing I'm concerned about is, is that um, I, you know, we sent our yes, response to the state, and um, that's our legal uh, defense. If you and that's fine. I mean, and what so I'm going to say is not requiring a response. I get your defense. I, I, I understand. I just um, am, am, again, reluctant to discuss the issue because we as a board have closed it, and, and so I'd like us to... This is not a discussion. This is a statement. This is a statement of town business that I think having dutifully recused myself as the town council asked me to do. I just want to make a brief statement. So you're un you, unrecusing yourself? I'm, I'm, I'm reacting to what I've received. The letter that I received had a paragraph in it, paragraph two, which really solved the problem for me, okay? All I asked was A, that we recognize that this was probably not the best thing for us to do. Whether or not it was an open meeting violation, it seemed to me that it was, but that doesn't matter uh, what it seemed to me. Um, it seemed actually based on my watching uh, what town council said the last time, uh, dangerous territory, probably something we should avoid. The par that paragraph two indicated that that would be something we should avoid in the future, A and B that generally speaking, you know, um, several of the members felt that it was probably not the most appropriate thing to do, won't have it happen again, mm -hmm. go forward. Mm -hmm. That was really the only thing I was looking for. And so I want to say to all of you, um, I appreciate the time you put in to reviewing this. Um, requirement to agree 100% with everything that comes out is not necessary. Being respectful of the opinions is what is what's required mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in a very respectful way accepting that opinion and letting you know that um, it is not, I, I have already written to the Attorney General's office explaining that I have no interest in going forward. I think it's important for us to move on with the town business. I agree. So um, that was one missing item from the agenda. 
the well, other. Actually, I, I was going to bring it up, but you, you just. Well, you know, I mean, it's okay. It's it, okay. I, it had to be said. I saw. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it there. So, yeah. this is a time that you know selectmen don't always make a, only make liaison reports. They're also open for Thomas. commentary right. on <laughs> pending town Absolute. business. Absolutely. Yes. Um, the last piece of that that I want to comment on is that we have an outstanding um, collection of minutes. Mm -hmm. from an executive session. There has yes, been much do. acrimony about what was stated in that executive session. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's my opinion that we need to, in with all due haste, mm -hmm. move forward to executive session. That is not scheduled for tonight. Right. I would ask that we agree to move to executive session as early as possible so that we can look at the minutes so that those minutes mm -hmm. can be thoroughly vetted by us and exposed to the general public. Because in my opinion, there's been a characterization that one thing happened compared with what I think the minutes are gonna reflect. So that being said, I'm going to say to you that I urge this board to meet an executive session at its earliest possible opportunity to approve a set of minutes that can be released to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Vanessa? Sure. Uh, so I actually went, um, Barry and I had a subcommittee meeting for communications um, policy and review. He'll go into more of that in a moment. Um, I also went to the Lincoln Prescott residential meeting this morning. Um, and so just a few updates there for those who might be interested that are from the neighborhood. Um, the foundation work is being done now and above ground work will be approximately October to December. Uh, they're gonna move indoors come January. Um, they're going to work on improving signage for pedestrian walkways since some of them have been impeded due to construction. Um, and they're going to remind the crews not to litter. There has been some concern about um, littering and rodent problems, uh, so that should help address that. They also agreed to post updates to the website, which is construction at 35lincolnst.com uh, to help keep the neighbors better informed. Uh, and the other item is this board had reviewed the housing bill 4290, which we had had some concerns about as far as their changes to zoning. Uh, I just wanted to report back that failed to pass in either chamber, so they're going back to the drawing board on that. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Vanessa. So, uh, Barry? Okay. Just a uh, few things. Um, I I didn't see any folks there, but it was a long day. But I did attend the Jams for Jake concert uh, a couple of Sundays ago um, down at Simon's Field. Can I just rain? Uh, no, it was uh, cleared up. It cleared up. They canceled the Saturday and they, they did Sunday. Then okay. it went from rain to 95 degrees. <laughs> so um, I have to just, I, I can't say enough about those young people who organized this in memory of their friend and not just their friend, but really kind of putting forward um, a positive message and working with um, lots of other groups to really put the opioid crisis um, at the forefront. These are young people um, and they put together a tremendous a tremendous show a lot of talent out there um, it's um, uh, jams for Jake you can find it you can make a donation um, they raised a lot of money they can use a lot more um, also and then um, as part of that uh, I, I know folks maybe have have heard um, on a related note that um, Erica McNamara from uh, who used to run Mikasa for 10 years has resigned and I um, to take on a job at UMass Lowell mm -hmm. she was really the heart and soul of Mikasa really starting it um, John you probably worked with her more than anybody here um, and I just I just wanted to wish her well she's going to be I think the head of uh, student mental health services at UMass Lowell mm -hmm. which is really a nice segue into the work that she's done and again just you know big shoes to fill but really Rakasa is Rakasa because of Erica and I really um, wanted just to give her a shout out um, and the props that she deserves you know Barry I think we should probably take go one step further you know it seems to me that we should uh, John, her in an official I'm sorry, way. just let Barry finish I, I'm, I'm asking people to respect the floor when, when, when others have the floor I think I know you're going to go with this and maybe do so a more formal proclamation uh, yes. with that. I think um, I think that this is a great. Uh, you know, I don't want you to get her back in here to, to honor her yeah. more appropriately. So, um, 
So I, uh, I attended the CPTC meeting um, on Monday, last Monday. Um, they didn't really take up, uh, there was a lot of things that got kind of postponed, but there were a couple of things of interest that I want to share with the board. Um, one, um, one was sort of on kind of um, design guidelines and standards um, for um, projects in the 40R. I mean, we, we did the 40R overlay, and you know, unbeknownst to us, we got like bombarded with project, which was great. But it, you know, the, and and sort of each project, kind of, the board sort of looked at, it, and now they sort of want to take a look at sort of the whole district as a whole. Um, and Jean and her staff have put together some guidelines, and the board um, and the CPTC looked at that, just sort of about what the expectations are in terms of how the buildings relate to the rest of the district and to each other, um, and design guidelines. And there's some really good stuff in there. Um, they also looked at um, kind of. Um, whether or not it made sense to sort of relook at um, at the master plan, um, you know, we had talked about that a little bit here. Their feeling is is that rather than sort of undertake a, a long process and dealing with lots of expensive consultants, their druthers are rather to kind of take a look at pieces of it yeah. and, and kind of fix as needed. Um, I don't think there's any formal vote of discussion on it, but that's sort of where their feeling is. And obviously, so they'd be the ones who are going to be the ones who um, kind of implement that. They, they didn't really have an appetite to kind of take on the master plan at this point. Um, just so I have a little friend here. <laughs> um, go, go play with Dan. Um, so um, we're going to have a proclam proclamations later for uh, some Eagle Scouts, but there was also an event that Dan and, and, and uh, John Halsey and I attended. Um, it was a, a Eagle Scout candidate, Kevin uh, Yatsuhashi. Uh, his Eagle Scout project was to actually con design and construct uh, a permanent flagpole at the entrance of the library, and that was dedicated on Friday. Um, he did a tremendous job. Uh, and now as you drive by on Middlesex, you will see the flag, the uh, United States flag and Massachusetts flag, um, 24 hours um, and, and lit at night. So great job and, and, and a wonderful effort by Kevin. Um, and then lastly, Dan and I, as part of our sub uh, subcommittee on looking at the town manager's uh, contract, as you know, the town manager's in the last year of his contract, um, we met and um, discussed um, sort of the salary and benefit survey that we've sort of been putting together um, with some of the, um, you know, uh, peer communities and some other towns and starting that process. Um, you know, obviously, as part of the process, I, I want to use this as a reminder that um, town manager evaluations are due, Dan, um, next Monday. Next Monday. It's a firm deadline, guys. Firm, at 10 o'clock, you said, right? right? So, and that's all part of, obviously, um, looking at, at Bob's contract again is, is doing the evaluation. And I think it goes to, they go to Judy? Uh, or Judy or uh, Mac Cronellis. Or Mac Cronellis. So, so to both, probably. Yeah, but obviously not Bob and not any of us. Yeah, there's a nice instructional uh, email right. that Bob wrote up. So, um, and that's all I have. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Dan? Vanessa and I attended the Recreation Committee, first time as liaisons. Uh, a number of topics were discussed. The one I wanted to specific, specifically focus on was the fact that Friends of Reading uh, Baseball have uh, donated a turtle batting cage. That's not a batting cage for turtles, but rather a batting cage that resembles a turtle. Uh, so it's covered on the top and on the sides. Uh, it can fold up to be stowed away. The uh, It has a, a soft exterior that can be taken off in the winter, and uh, the aluminum casing can be folded up put in a safe place. So I think that's coming before us on the 11th for approval since any gifts have yeah, to yeah. be approved by us. Um, cable TV negotiations are continuing with Comcast. We've had one meeting uh, with the Comcast rep. Uh, we're, we brought issues of concern to them. They're taking them back under advisement and we'll be meeting again on Wednesday. So that's a staff only meeting. And the, uh, as Barry said, and I can't emphasize it enough, Tom Energy Review inputs are due next Monday at 10 a.m. Please. Thanks, thanks, Dan. Um, I just have a, a, a few things to say. Um, <coughs> introducing the timers to help us be, to help keep moving things along. I'm not trying to silence people, but just so we're aware. Three minutes is actually a long period of time to talk. Um, 
I wanted to announce, as John uh, referred to, our response to the open meeting law ha uh, complaint has been sent by our town council, and um, that matter is closed unless we hear otherwise from the state. Um, uh, also, an important announcement, we have an opening on the bylaw committee uh, for a full member, and it's only a Five-person five board. Person. Yep. So, yep. Can have. so when they're down to four, oh, you, yep. you can have trouble reaching quorum. So right. please tell your friends, encourage people um, to apply to the position. I, <coughs> I'm their liaison, and I promised that I would try to get the position filled s soon. Of course, it, it'll start with the, va the VASC. Um, Actually, that goes to a separate appointing yeah. committee. You're, you're one oh, third of that right. yeah. committee with yeah. the yeah. moderator yes, and the yes. chair. I have, a, I have yeah. one Wednesday night, so uh, I apologize. So and they okay. do not get associate, I don't think. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I made that mistake. No. <coughs> <coughs> Lastly, the I just wanted to remind every, uh, the board and the public and um, and town staff. Um, Barry sent out after, while he was acting chair, um, we had this discussion about uh, wanting to represent the neighborhoods where these projects, these develop new developments are going up. Um, because obviously it, it has a big impact on those neighbors. So uh, to remind everyone, uh, John was assigned to the post office project, uh, Vanessa to the 24 Gold Street, Gould Street project. I've been assigned to the Lincoln Street process uh, or, or project, <coughs> I apologize. Uh, Dan, Woburn Street. Yep. Barry, Sunoco, and Lake, Lakeview. That you kindly assigned yourself to two, which is very nice. <laughs> Sparing the rest of you. Yes. Yeah, so please come to us, the, the liaison, if if you have questions, and and we'll try to uh, open up some good communication between uh, the developers uh, and and the neighbors, select board, and involve town staff as appropriate. And that's all I have. So I will. I Oh, yes. I just have a question. The rodent issue, is that going to be discussed? It, yeah, the, 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 there is a, um, you've all heard of the rodents. Um, Bob will make a presentation on that. Um, I looked up some, some uh, information from the CDC and, and other places uh, that, that I can share, share with the community. Um, and then I'm sure the Board of Health, you know, Dan will be aware of that. Yep. The Board of Health will be um, yep. looking into that yep, in, in the future. So now it's time for public comment, um, except for the rodent issue, which is a, is a quick concern, you know, is obviously a, uh, a sort of an immediate concern. Um, I'm going to limit public comment to this, to, to right now. Um, so that we can get get our work done um, for the evening, and I just remind you that uh, to address me and uh, to state your name, address, and um, to keep it within two minutes. We have a lot of people, a lot of people want to speak, so I, you know, I'd just like to be moving on. Two or three. Two. Two. The three-minute timers are for the, for the select uh, people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. You got to be special. Get that extra minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two. Um, it um, is. Member of the cemetery board of trustees. We still looking for one more member. We have one. Uh, Frankie Driscoll's daughter has suggested she'd like to come on, mm -hmm. and when right. she gets her children ready for school, she'll be done. Uh, but we still need one more person. Uh, it, it, it's not an exciting board. We, we have a lot. And we make sure that everybody gets buried. <laughs> At the right place. Thank you. Um, the board of Health would not allow us to do otherwise. I'm sure. Um, 
Speaking of openings, Barry and Vanessa, you are the Basque now, correct? Actually, I don't think we Dan? haven't really I don't decided. Think you decided that. Neither. Did. Actually, technically, it's still me and Dan. Yeah. We haven't. Oh, so we've think, okay. done that. I think your motion was that Vanessa would replace one of you, but I'm not sure it was. Clear. I don't think we ever designated. She replaced me. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, so <laughs> thanks for your service. Yeah. yeah thank Do we you. need to vote on that? Yeah, we probably should. So, so um, did we? Did we though? We might have. I, I thought we, we already should do it. Yeah. But let's just do it. Um, so, would someone like to yeah, propose we're a motion? that now before public comments over? Uh, yeah, let's just get it get it done while we're on the top. Yeah, so I, I officially stepped down, so now there's a moment. Okay, so so we, can someone make a motion? Uh, motion to, to assign Dan Ensminger and Vanessa Alvarado to the Volunteer Appointment Subcommittee. Through the June 30th. Through June yeah. 30th, 2019. 19. Second. Any, Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? So 5 0. Now to public comment. Uh, and thank you uh, for the first one. You gotta the crowd. Andy. Yes. Uh, uh, in the second row, then the first row, and we'll go from there. Hi, good evening. Cadence Thomas is Arlington Street. Um, I have uh, brief remarks updating um, the select board on the Lincoln Prescott uh, development interactions with community. Um, Vanessa gave you a little bit of an update um, in her remarks earlier. Uh, today, August 21st, the developer and construction team held a meeting in Swiss Bakers for the community regarding the residential development at Lincoln and Prescott Streets. Uh, this was the second meeting of its kind, the first being on April 2nd. In the April meeting, there was discussion of having monthly or bi-monthly meetings, and today, four and a half months later, we are having our first follow-up to that agreement. Uh, we made progress with the construction team who, at both the April meeting and today's meeting, have been interested and willing to communicate and work with neighbors. Um, the largest issues at present are pertaining to safety for both drivers and pedestrians um, at and around both uh, Lincoln and Prescott Street sides, uh, sight lines at the corner, um, and adequate signage and road, uh, road markings, as um, Vanessa said earlier. Uh, while the construction company has been willing, um, open to improvements um, and, and conversation, um, we, we continue to have some difficulty finding agreeable terms with the, the developer. The meeting was well attended given the, the, that we only had two workday notice, the meeting uh, time of 10 a.m. on a weekday, and um, only the most basic outreach done by an email list that was created by the construction company at the April 2nd meeting. There were about 10 to 12 uh, neighbors and residents um, in attendance, and um, select board member Vanessa Alvarado was also there, which was very helpful in terms of setting and adhering to appropriate roles and making at least some attempts to hold the developer to account. Uh, matters that remain are um, in need of care are um, that we do not have we do not have town representation at the meeting. Having planning staff and traffic and safety representation in the room will um, help the community construction team and developer to use the meeting time efficiently and effectively. Without traffic and safety, for instance, the developer is making claims that cannot be verified or negotiated at the time. Um, there was an original traffic and safety plan in place and negotiated between the town and the developer, um, but not with. Uh, community input, and that plan is uh, apparently changing over time as, as some of the boundaries have moved um, closer into the street, etc. Um, and the community has on the ground concerns and feedback, which could really positively inform decision making and agreements between the town and developer. I have meeting, to, I'm going to have to let you wrap it up. I've got another paragraph. The meeting location and time, this is three sentences. The meeting location and time of day um, are problematic as well, as there is a need to have meetings at a time when community members can attend. And matters of advanced planning and notice of these community meetings, who plans the meetings and expectations uh, that municipal staff participate, how the meeting information is, information is shared across the community, both before in advance of the meeting and after the meeting can continue to be a concern. The only other matter um, at hand is water lines have been established into the site, um, but gas lines have not. Um, establishing gas line connections on the site may constitute new lines, um, and I know that's been an issue um, before the board, so I wanted to let you know that there are not gas lines on the site. Th thank you. Thank you. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm it on that, so I will reach out to the developer. Um, okay. Eileen Letario. Uh, and I, I live on Deborah Drive. 
recently I reviewed the board meetings on RCTV and I want to thank the experienced members for their honesty when making difficult decisions like electing a new chair. But at the very end of that discussion, before the last tiebreaker vote, I was very disturbed to hear a member who at that point was not being asked to critique the merits of the two names in play, but suddenly used inflammatory rhetoric to publicly discredit, discredit one of them, a highly respected member with over 29 years serving Reading children and families. Later, in July, I did find it hypocritical. The same member assumed the role of the board's moral authority, threatening and preaching civility after having been publicly uncivil toward a fellow board member. And I feel this should end. Secondly, I also want to call attention to an issue that I feel needs clear guidelines to prevent what occurred on April 2nd, the night before the townwide election. Having an advantage being a Barrows parent, one candidate accessed the school's parent email list and sent an email blast to the school community soliciting votes and promoting a political agenda. Many Barrows parents and voters contacted me to point out that they felt it was unfair, unethical, and a disservice to the opponent. When schools accept parent emails, I know firsthand parents expect trust and their email contacts will be used for school-related initiatives, not for political gain. Transparency was a foundational element in the last campaign, so I feel instead of preaching transparency, it should be practiced by all board members. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Um, my name is Dr. Neary. I reside in Village Street. Uh, lifelong resident of town. And obviously my family and friends are uh, also in town. I'm asking you tonight to support the moratorium of new and replacement gas main projects. I've worked for National Group for 35 years, dating back to the Boston Gas Year. I can say this is dangerous work that we perform. It can take years of working side by side with seasoned veterans to learn this job, to pass along that knowledge to the next person. There is no replacement for experience with natural gas. Uh, the work being done on our streets right now is not in the interest of public safety, and certainly not in the best interest of the citizens of the town of Reading. The replacement workers that National Grid has set out on the streets frankly don't know what they're doing. They were bare minimum of training before they were sent out on parts of the crews. The union is here tonight. They were asking for a moratorium, not unlike what happens during the course of the winter, um, on non-emergency non work. Emergencies are something obviously entirely different ballgame. And as it is something that needs to be done. Um, what we were asking for is more to more moratorium on work that could be put off until trained professionals who do it every day, second nature, are back in the field making sure the work is done correctly and safely. We're certainly not asking the town to become involved in any manner, shape, or form, or labor issue. Um, some of the 20 other cities and towns have taken this step. <coughs> uh, and I think it's to protect the residents. Thank you. You know that the board will be taking this on later in the evening. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. In the back. Angela Vinda, 10 Orchard Park Drive. I have to agree with Ms. Leterio that transparency from our board is extremely important. I sent a letter several week, a week ago. I spoke at the last selectman's meeting about an incident which I think uh, is very important. I hope that the questions that I asked about Board of Selectmen's roles in <coughs> providing information equitably, um, I hope the questions that I asked in my letter are answered to Ms. Materia's point about complete transparency by the board. Thank you. Thank you. 
in the back. My name is Steve Obropoulos from Linear Lane, and I'd like to support the moratorium on the, on the gas. It has to do with public safety, and bringing guys in, managers and supervisors to work out on the street and not doing this job every day. It, it, it's very important that I just want to support these guys. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Right here. And then, and then over there. Mr. Friedman, my name is Darren. I'm from <coughs> I live on 457 Franklin Street. It's my first time I've been to this kind of meeting. And uh, I'd just like to express that I'm baffled and dismayed about your demeanor towards Mr. Halsey. Several times already tonight, he's tried to speak. You've cut him off. You've been rude to him. But I've noticed anytime anyone else wants to speak, you're very gracious and kind, uh, gentle and generous. And I just don't think that's right. Thank you. In the back. Hi, my name is John Zanoda, 62 Lothrop Road. I'm actually a uh, neighbor of Mr. Lala Shiro. I've been working for uh, National Grid for roughly 16 years now. And I agree with the other fellow gas workers that this is a serious issue coming forward, especially with new projects like uh, Prescott and uh, Lincoln. I was the technician that actually did the last gas work there. There's quite a bit of gas work to be done. Uh, you have the train station there. You have the general public, you know, frequenting that area very, very much. The people that are out there, sir, at the, at the moment uh, are not trained not nearly like the National Grid people that are usually on staff. That's something you should be very aware about. Uh, with gas, there's no second chance. And uh, you know, property, people, that's our main concern, and we have a great record doing it. Honestly, you don't know who you're gonna get if you may call in a gas leak, let's say tomorrow. It could be a technician that was trained temporarily for two weeks. It could be a manager that has not been out in the field for 15 years. So that, that's a big concern. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Bob, town manager's report. I'd like to say that anytime I smell gas, it seems like Mr. Sarnota is already on. <laughs> <laughs> last, we last met at Haven Street. Uh, does he get two minutes too? <laughs> I won't take two minutes. Um, every item um, was covered with the exception of the rodent issue. And I, I had a letter from the health agent today. I have a list. And I also have some contact information. Um, I'm not going to read the whole letter to you, but please understand the health agent and the Board of Health indirectly is well aware of these issues. Um, they have contacted the Board and myself with a summary and a list of rooms. And me. And, and Dan is liaison. Um, there is also a, a uh, spreadsheet being tracked of every complaint, and you can see there's not very many. Um, and I'm going to finish my remarks rather quickly, and we're happy to put this on the website if people would find it helpful. But I want to focus my remarks on this page. Um, I went home today to lunch, uh, and my wife said, hey, there's rats in the neighborhood. I said, how do you know that? She said, because I read it on the parents' Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Let me suggest that if your neighbor's house is on fire, you shouldn't post it on the neighbor's Facebook page until after you call the fire department. <laughs> so there had only been eight calls into town hall so far on this, and there's way more posts. There's a map on Facebook that shows all the locations. It's much bigger than our map. Um, it's a very serious issue. I don't mean to make light of it, but the, the general public has to understand, if you want your town government to do something about it, you need to tell us. Um, and having other residents complain that they're, they're hearing things, their neighbor might have heard something, is understandable, but it's not helpful in us solving the problem. We need to know facts. The health agent, the Board of Health, needs to know exact things. And she has received, as you saw, a list. She has visited every location that has reported it and has one o'clock today, and I didn't see her since. She's probably out doing more. Um, I've contacted the head of the MWRA because there was some suggestion that um, you know, some of their work had something to do with it. And uh, he said, can you please provide me a list of streets, and I'll look into it. And I have, and I hadn't heard back before this meeting started. 
So I just want to urge people to please contact the town, and I've listed two email addresses. Either one is fine, two is usually better. One is the select board at ci.reading.ma.us. It's on the website if you go to the select boards page. And the other is town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. And Bob, you're copied automatically on the first And I am copied on the select board, but if people want to make sure they get my attention, uh, two places is good. Um, as yet, the Board of Health does not have a generic email address. We'll look into that. Um, that's why I think these are the best email addresses between all of us in this room. One of us is bound to you know, make contact with the right person internally. And again, um, I, I do understand the uh, attraction of social media and the ability to like and dislike comments and pile on. But for those that are only using social media, you're not helping solve the problem. So I urge you to please contact us with first-hand information. Bob, let me, um, I, I just wanted to add on, on to that. Um, emphasize, please contact the town so that the Board of Health um, can ad address the issue and know the severity of the issue. I, there are some, there's a lot out on the web about rats um, that is not necessarily true. Uh, I, I've, I have been visited by uh, a, a plague of rats myself some years back and watched, watched my corn stalks get eaten by a rat during the daytime climbing up. They didn't leave me a kernel. What's really upsetting and is when I read the emails of people whose the inside of their houses have been severely damaged by rats. And that's that. That and then the disease issue is is somewhat of a risk. I have information from the CDC, um, NIH, on diseases that can be carried by rats. I'm not trying to alarm anyone, um, but but I can send that to Dan as the liaison to the Board of Health. They are good sources of information and 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 accurate. Um, please, you know, until, you know, to help the town get this under control, it's very hard to trap, you, tra trap your way out of a rat infestation. They breed just very rapidly, and they're also very smart. So um, they will learn that a snap trap is not a good thing to go near. Um, so, um, Try to remove any for food sources uh, that they may have access to, bird feeders, um, things in the house or outside the house that are food for dogs. Grass seed is another big one. I, I learned that one personally. Um, and, and any other source of food, try to secure it so a rat can't get in there. Um, and then there is also, uh, if rats are poisoned, I, I heard a rumor that the town was poisoning rats. We are not, to my knowledge, poisoning rats. But individuals uh, can can poison rats if they have uh, a problem with them. And um, the the risk to a dog, for example, eating one rat is relatively low. Um, but if they eat many rats, the risk goes up. So, and there's a, uh, I have a link on that as well. It's from the uh, state of Oregon. If I, if I might, Andy, um, two sources of food for rats that I wouldn't have thought about, um, that I've learned about this week, are pet waste. Mm. And uh, Washington Park in particular has been cited as a place where uh, some dog walkers get together, let the dogs off the leash, and off they go. Um, it's really important that you pick up after your pet. Um, and then the other source is actually folks that compost it. Um, people don't think about the fact that compost for a rat is the scale like all of the restaurant. So those are two things that might not be obvious sources that you should really be careful in. I have to say, from the interactions I've heard about and read about so far, um, generally our residents are doing a good job. One resident even went out of the way to say, well, this health agent said it's probably over there in your neighbor's yard. You see all this? And she said, and do you want us to contact the neighbor? Oh, no. My landscaper will go fix that for her. So it's nice to hear a neighbor's helping neighbors. Uh, but again, the town can't fix something unless it hears directly from her. And secure any, find, try to find out where they're getting in your house and fix it. It's hard, but, but. Uh, so 
Anything else on that topic? No, not, and I'm done by report. Any, Everything else got covered. I, I, any, any questions in the audience about the rodent issue? Because I, I, I have a question for Bob. Yes. So, Bob, all cities and towns have rodent issues. I mm -hmm. deal with a lot of chipmunks personally. Um, my kids love them. The foundation, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it is a problem that has become more severe, let's say, recently, what actions could the town take to help remediate? Um, the, the actions by the town are actually very limited. Um, it's private property. Our advice from our health agent, first and foremost, is to hire a professional. Some residents will do that, some residents won't. I will say that if it's in, in an area, um, residents should get together to hire a professional because I've heard stories from some of my neighbors that they've done that in the past and economically it's a much better deal. So it, it really has to rise to a pretty significant crisis before the town has the lawful authority to enter private property and do something about it. Um, another sort of uh, source that can be um, missed is we have a vacant property bylaw, but we don't have a bylaw that says you got to mow your lawn. Yeah. And you know, if, you, if one of your neighbors has a lawn that's uh, one foot high, that's a place where rats might want to go. So neighbors just have to help police each other. Uh, the town, again, by law, can suggest to people that we can't enforce until it becomes a real serious issue. Um, anyone else on the rodent situation? No. Um, Yes. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that bird feeders. Yes, they the the birds the, get at know, the, the food and then it dro it drops. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that uh, if you have a bird feeder and the seeds drop, um, that is a f good food source for rats. Spread a sundown for those little. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I you know I, I wish it were otherwise. In the winter time, I watched a rat crawl out in the snow with about four or five offspring behind her, go to the feeder collect a bunch of stuff, and then, uh, sorry for the visual. <laughs> <laughs> I know winter, it was during, not winter, but I did put a pumpkin out at Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love it. It stayed there too long, and I said, that is not a chipmunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was right. just like, yeah. yeah. Chipmunks yeah. will not mind visiting your home either. No. Um, and we have a plethora of, of chipmunks and rabbits, and uh, just not enough red-tailed hawks and coyotes. <laughs> yeah, um, I wanted you my coyote. As a <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, we have coyotes. They're just not coming to my neighborhood. We do. Um, or enough. Um, all right. Yeah. Bob, I, uh, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned to you earlier, I just wanted to get an update on the hiring of uh, a new economic developer. Oh, a development, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Economic development director. Um, the update since uh, Barry reviewed this, I'm going to say in July, I'm not positive which meeting. Um, I since have met with uh, two other communities, town managers, and discussed our priorities and our plan going forward. And the clear priority for uh, all of us was for ready to hire a new DPW director, which has just been completed this yep. week. So now we're set for a second meeting with the DPW <coughs> directors of other communities and myself, and we'll plot a course forward. Um, given the primaries in early September, we wanted to stay away from the legislators until after then, but we fully intend to do that and to involve uh, probably one member of the board from each community. We're still discussing that. Okay. Um, so, and that's, that's sort of discussing the project, and then that will help us shape uh, who we hire as an economic development director. As I think Barry reported to you in July, we went through a round, but we just didn't find any satisfactory candidates after doing a lot of work for them. So Barry, we wanted to try again. Oh, sorry. No. Did you have anything to add, Barry? No, I mean, yeah. I just think, as I reported last time, um, the job description, the, the candidates that we got just didn't fit the role of what we thought we needed. And, and given the fact that the DPW garage is probably the, you know, the big elephant in the room, we should probably have a DPW director before we sort of figure out the next steps. Now that we have one, um, we can uh, we can kind of reformulate that um, and get back with it with our other towns. So. Um, that's basically what Bob said. Is okay. Is that. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. And and one one more one more thing, um, the override which passed, 
Um, I want to. Um, I, I was wondering if we could get a brief, brief uh, uh, update from you at our next meeting on the status of the override spending. Um, I know that. It's not like you get the money and then you can spend it all at once. I, I understand the challenge. You haven't got the money yet, just to be clear. <laughs> okay. Um, I can update you on all the positions and where we stand. Though. Exactly. Who's been hired? Who hasn't yep. been hired? And 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 hopefully it, there will be surplus. Not surplus, but there will. It, it's going to go. It will go into next year and and, and our plans yep. for that. I mean. The, yeah, the, I can update you briefly that um, hiring in uh, the fire department is slow. And that's uh -huh. civil service related. Hiring the police department was faster than I expected, mm -hmm. and everything else I report to is case by case. Okay, and I understand the school committee has their yes. yep. their their piece of it too. That would be great because I, okay. I want to keep that in the eye of the that's good public, um, so they know how we're being. Um, how we're spending our money. And I know it's going to be discussed at the financial forum in October, yeah. but, but um, it'll be not, not everyone has the stamina uh, for those meetings. Yeah, I'll do that at your next meeting. Okay. Anyone else? Questions for Bob? Okay, thank you. Um, so our next agenda item, uh, oh, ah, thank you, Barry. Um, I'm going to sort of interrupt the the flow of the meeting right now because I hear that we have some guests in the room and, and Barry will uh, take it from here. Okay. So um, uh, this past Saturday I had the honor and it just seems like um, every couple of months um, we get the call that we have more Eagle Scouts who are taking the um, uh, Court of Honor. And this Saturday I uh, attended the ceremony for three. Uh, ben Carey, who I, I see here, uh, Corey Ward and Ryan Monahan um, got their Eagle Scout awards. Um, terrific, I mean, just terrific gentlemen. Um, and they worked on some terrific projects, really leaving a legacy um, of, um, of good work here. All three are heading out to school, which is why um, I think only Ben could make it today. Um, and um, uh, it was sort of a, a late notice, but I, I wanted to get these things done and acknowledged um, sort of before you guys head off. Um, and also, you know, we have a full, a full house here um, to really honor the work that you do. And I know, John, you're a big... Uh, supporter of scouts and you know it's just it's it's just incredible um, the two packs that we have in here that really um, give of themselves and just and the families excuse me while we sign all these <laughs> um, so um, I'm actually gonna read them as soon as Andy signs it <laughs> so um, you start with those okay so we have um, Three and actually one one is here. Ben, do you want to stand up? So this is actually a really good segue um, because um, uh, Ben's project was to build a safety fence and shield to keep animals away from the dumpster at St. Anthony's. So those people up on Haverhill Street, um, you know, those rats are going to go out of the West Side. So, um, to the good work of, of, of Ben, and, and so he kind of felt funny because it's sort of like you know, it's sort of like oh, I built a a fence around a dumpster. <laughs> you know, what's my legacy? So, because his name is Carey, we're going to call it the Carey Corral. So, uh, excellent. But um, in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project, in which he built a safety fence around the dumpster at St. Anthony's Church on Haverhill Street for sanitation purposes and protection from animals to keep it sanitary, given on this 21st day of August 2018 by the Reading Board of Selectmen. Excellent. So, second. 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 All right. All in favor. Oh, any discussion? Yeah. Okay, so hang, hang around. Yeah, yeah. you're the, okay. the courier. Yeah. All right, so sorry, guys. Um, the second one is um, for Ryan Monahan. Um, 
in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project in which he built 16 community garden beds at First Baptist Church in Woburn Street. And these garden beds will allow people to grow their own food. So we did this ceremony actually in Old South, mm. which around the, around the corner, as we know, it houses the Ready Food Pantry. But the work that Ryan did actually gives people the chance to grow their own food. And as we know, there's nothing more sacred than you know, the right to have people good food to eat. So Ryan did a tremendous job um, in, um, in allowing people now, whoever they want to, can go and use that to grow their own food. So That's congratulations. Great. Second on that? Yes, second. All, any discussion? All in favor? And the last one is to Corey Ward. Um, in recognition of his achieving the Eagle Scout Award for his leadership project in which he built a message center at the dog walking park near the Grove Street entrance of the compost center. Um, the message center has um, all the trails for the town forest posted and with all the rules and the regulations. So I think this is now the second or third project that an Eagle Scout has undertaken in the town forest. So obviously, you know, besides just sort of the conservation and the beautification and just sort of keeping the land pristine, um, I mentioned to Corey and, and, and the folks there that it's also an economic development issue because you know we're competing with some of our other towns for sort of people to move in and invest and there's a town to our east that sort of they keep they keep um, talking about this thing they have called I think it's the lake I don't know some kind of lake um, so you know they keep talking about that but we have a town forest so that's something that we all to be proud of so Corey and a number of other Eagle Scouts have done some really good work in the town forest keeping that safe and, and, and pristine so um, a second for court. Second. second. All in favor? Right. Thank you, Mary. All right. Yeah. So just so, uh, Corey's going to be going to the University of Maine, Ryan is going to, uh, I think, UMass Worcester, and Ben, you're going to um, Loyola, Mary, Loyola, Maryland. Yep. And so safe travels to all the boys, and thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Barry. Uh, for, for doing that it's uh, we're all grateful for it um, I know John you've been involved in the Boy Scouts for a for while 60 years though. for a while I, I didn't want to bring in years and I know you recently went to a convention so I, if you wanted to add anything to Barry's comments or what Scouts do for us in general I well know, so. you know thank you the timer I would blow the timer up if I started <laughs> talking about how what I think about scouting and what it had what it does for young people um, the developmental issues obviously for Eagle Scouts is you know that it's a it's a mountaintop experience to actually finally finish welcome to the fraternity my friend um, it I will say this that it's more than being an Eagle Scout though it's the kind of the fellowship and the development and the training that goes on not everybody becomes an Eagle Scout you're right and the Eagle Scouts tend to bring all their you know their brothers along now mm -hmm. brothers and sisters along um, and um, we are fortunate here in Reading to have two Boy Scout troops um, still standing which is you know, this was a this was a town that had eight Boy Scout troops at one time, and two survive and thrive. Um, those two troops develop more Eagle Scouts, um, and I can tell you this from my own personal experience, having been the president of the Greater Boston Area Board of Directors of the Boy Scouts, 56 communities and towns um, all <coughs> produce Eagle Scouts because they all have Boy Scout troops. Reading has now for over 10 years um, produced more Eagle Scouts per year than any one of those other communities that includes Boston and you know a lot of places a lot bigger than we are here so you're part of the Eagles nest we call it here in Reading and I want to congratulate you for that and um, it's okay to be a Boy Scout in Reading which is kind of cool um, so thank you thanks John yeah. thanks yeah um, So next up, um, and, and before we get into the discussion and action items, I, I just wanted to um, make it clear that I, I'm not trying to uh, step on people's toes or, or uh, interrupt people, um, but I, it's two things. Um, 
I did have I, when you started when John started talking about the um, open media law response. Uh, I have to worry about that's our that's the town's defense. It turned out to be fine, but that's why I expressed uh, my, my concern. Um, other than that, I've also noticed, and, um, and I, I, I gather it's it's well publicized on local uh, Facebook pages that um, we are known somewhat as a, a, a board of hither, wither, and bicker. So uh, th that, I, that. I think we all need, you know, we all recognize that it needs to stop. I'm a new chair. This is my third meeting, um, and uh, I'm. I, I, I'm going to be, be run the meetings a little in, in more of an organized fashion, ask people to wait to be recognized by the chair before they speak, because I think oftentimes when we interrupt, then toes get stepped on and we sort of lose track of the discussion, and also to, to stay on point, on topic. Um, so, uh, uh, so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so the next item for discussion are liaison assignments, roles, and responsibility. And um, th this this originally cropped up, although uh, you know I know there have been other cases when you know boards and or, or liaisons. I'm sure there have been other cases where liaisons and boards that they are liaison to. Um, have there's been some friction that has developed. So, with that in mind, I, I, I want to start us off with a brief statement. And here I will use the timer and see if I can do this in three minutes. Um, I'd like to give a brief timeline of recent events uh, with the Recreation Committee and its former liaison. Um, I'm intentionally not using names because. Um, as Dan wisely pointed out, we try not to make things uh, personal here. But um, so I was I was first debriefed, debriefed on the events about the rec committee during a meeting uh, with the outgoing chair on June 23rd. Uh, that was a Saturday after I was elected chair, and this was all after the events took place. Um, for residents who don't follow the intricacies of, of town government, I should note that our boards, uh, that this board assigns liaisons to um, all the board <coughs> committees and commissions, volunteer boards, committees and commissions in town. Um, so the f following timeline presents the facts based on the public record, um, as well as a few things I learned in, in the meeting with the uh, outgoing acting chair. And I'm just gonna go dates, statements, states, statements. April 17th, uh, the Recreation Committee voted to send a letter to the Select Board requesting a new liaison. Between April 17th and May 15th, um, so, so that was about a month, um, The rec committee chair, at the advice of the town manager and rec uh, division staff, reached out to the acting chair of the select board before sending the letter. The recreation committee chair communicated with the select board acting chair and thought that the communication would lead to a positive outcome, so the letter was never finalized or sent. The select board, oh, why is this not working? I want the time back. Uh, the select board act, acting chair um, met with our former liaison to the recreation committee and discussed the addition of a select uh, of a second liaison in an attempt to alleviate the situation. May 15th, the select board met and voted to reappoint the previous liaison to rec committee. The board also voted to appoint a second liaison at the time. The events of April and May described above uh, were not discussed publicly at select board meetings. As a result, not all select board members were informed of this issue prior to the vote. Uh, this board has been asked by the public which members were not informed. I can only speak for myself, and I was not. June 12th, at the next meeting of the Recreation Committee, the uh, 
The reappointed select board liaison stated that he considered the April 17th meeting a public embarrassment. He also mentioned that he has been considering lawsuits to what, against the uh, uh, I'm almost done. Um, during the select board meeting, the original liaison to the rec committee uh, stepped down from the position and the board voted a uh, replacement. So that, to the best of my knowledge, is a summary of the events up to this point. If members of the public are interested in more details, uh, I point you to the town websites and the website and the meeting minutes uh, for the rec committee and the select board. Which are also in our packet. Which are also in our packet. Um, as well as there was a public records request on this matter that has some information as well, which is in a previous packet. Um, so, uh, so that's the timeline, and I just want to say two things before we start our discussion. Two um, issues in the timeline give give me cause for concern. One is that um, the board voted. Um, liaison appointments to the Recreation Committee when some of our members had not been informed of important facts relevant, relevant to the appointments. And two, a select board liaison was critical of and mentioned suing members of the committee to which he was assigned as liaison. And I feel that a liaison should not behave this way and, and I'm, I'm worried that it will affect our ability to attract and retain volunteers. With that, I would like to shift focus and have the board discuss what measures we can take to improve the process regarding liaison, appo liaison appointments, liaison roles, and liaison responsibilities. So um, who would like to begin? And Mr. I just Chairman. remind the board that the topic of discussion is how we move forward from here. I do not want to have this board rehash the past. Um, I, I, I really, it's important that we move forward on this issue and just talk about what measures we can take. John. I realize you don't want to rehash this. Yeah. We are talking about me. The record needs to be set straight. You've just made a statement to all assembled here, mm -hmm. to the TV audience, and for the record, that you know there was threats of suit. That is incorrect. If you read your packet, I'm assuming you did, it clearly points out two things. First of all, there was a discussion on June 12th that couldn't be a meeting because it was determined later that there was no quorum. John, and now, I'm sorry. I please have, do I not have stop, stop me. You can't I, stop yeah. me here. Well, I have right. a right to respond to something that you have said about me that is incorrect. In those minutes, and I would draw your attention to them, it says clearly that Halsey states that although he considered lawsuit on the advice of an attorney, he made a clear decision not to do that and to put it behind us and to go forward. That is clearly stated. It was stated in person to the Recreation Committee and it was backed up by going along with a step back in a resignation mm -hmm. in order <coughs> for us to get forward. So I take great issue mm -hmm. with you characterizing something that you A, were not present for, and B, take on hearsay when in fact the official record states exactly the opposite of that. That my position and it was stated that I was not going forward with anything, I wanted it behind us. So the the record you're stating does not indicate that you were, said you were considering. Uh, it said I considered it. Did not talk about any threats. It did not talk about going forward. As a matter of fact, it went on to say that quite the opposite. I, I had made I, a clear I, I, and conscious John, decision. You said that. You said that. I hear it, and I know. I read that in the minutes as well. Um, I would question why you would say what you just said. That if you were not trying to make it personal, John, it makes me wonder why you're doing what you're doing. Um, it, because I understand at the end of the conversation things had improved, but um, I feel and and if the board disagrees, we can stop right now. But I, I feel that the two issues that I pointed out. Um, we don't want to have happen again. And so I'd like to move forward and and um, discuss <coughs> what we can do possibly with policy or or anything like that. Well, you're making an assumption that something happened. You stated something that if happened the board that did not, not happen. 
and you know, from a clarity standpoint, I think it's really important that we don't continue to say that there was some kind of a threat of lawsuit when in fact it wasn't. John. I uh, so you're you're uh, you're taking uh, exception to the word. I'm taking threat. exception to the way that you're presenting this. Let me just I'm trying to focus on this. I know you, how to focus. You, you don't worry about it. All right, John, that's enough. We need to move on. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I just, uh, mm -hmm. just say something? Um, I think there's a lot of lessons in, in all of this. Um, I mean, I, I actually was never at any of the Recreation Committee meetings, and in fact, um, didn't know about sort of what happened until I read the minutes. So, you know, I, and I'm just one member of the board. I, and I think, though, in reading <coughs> kind of um, not only the minutes, and I think the June mi minutes that are in our packet were draft minutes. I, I don't know if the Recreation Committee actually formalized the minutes. It can't be approved because it wasn't a meeting. Okay. John, so, please so, don't interrupt. So, um, the other part, the, the thing that, the, the thing I think that everybody has expressed here um, from, um, and this is in the public record, this is not any conversations that I had, but in the public record, that there's just a clear desire to move on, <coughs> right? For people to acknowledge and represent, and, and, and this is what happened, but to move on. Um, you know, John, wh whether you meant to say what you said or, 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 or conveyed something, people took it one way, right? Now, whether or not you meant to convey that, that's another story, what you said, what, what was heard. Um, that happens a lot. But words do matter. When it, it, you it, say words, it, John, and I please, that, John, I'm, I'm not going to ask you again. Please do not. Barry is the floor. Please do not interrupt. Barry is, this is directing a question to me. I understand, John. But we're having. I mean, this is called a discussion. Yeah, no, this is called it, it, taking the floor away from Barry, and I, and and it, we just can't do this anymore. We can't. And and the only way I can see that we can stop doing this is for let people to speak when they have the floor, not step on each other's words. Now, now the other piece that I just want to mention, um, because you also brought it up in your remarks that I was the chair at the time, um, I was reached out to by the chair of the rec committee, um, and they told me that they wanted that they actually took this action two weeks before that, and they and they voted to have a new um, a new um, request for a request for a new liaison, not a demand, right. but a request. In my role as chair. Um, I reserve the right to make nominations for who's going to be liaison. Now, it became clear, actually, after the fact, in reading the, in the public record, um, and the reason why this wasn't made public is that the Recreation Committee wrote a letter but never decided never to send it. And they decide, I don't know why they didn't decided not to send it, but the conversation that I had, the, the impression that I was is that they were having a conversation chair to chair. And, and in that conversation, they talked about sort of sometimes the roles of, of John, you as a selectman, and also representing many boards get blurred, um, and that there could be some co potential conflicts of interest. Me, in my role as the chair, Right. I decided in order to have effective representation from the board of selectmen or the select board to the rec committee um, was to appoint a second liaison so that when those instances occur, there could be a recusal and then um, there could be a recusal and still there would be another uh, liaison assigned there to do the work. I think if the recreation committee wanted us to know about that, they would have sent the letter. This was a conversation chair to chair. I used that in my judgment, and that's why I appointed a second liaison. It was not an to attempt to hide anything or information to withhold. It was just my judgment on how best to solve the situation based on the conversation that I had with chair with the rec committee. That was my judgment. That's what, what happened. Now, as far as sort of where we go from here, I know, Dan, you have some things that you've been working on, I, I, mm. I, I know. Um, but the bottom line is, is that I don't think you need policy to change policy, to basically do what's really self-evident, mm. right, and mm -hmm. common sense. <coughs> Treat people with respect, whether that's us to um, people who we appoint, whether it's the community to us, although there's nothing in policy that can change that, you guys could be as mean as you want, right? Um, we, uh, yeah, it's in the salary, right? It's just common sense. And when there are things that need to get worked out, do what I do, pick up the phone, right? I mean, and, and, and I think that, or as my friend George Katchen, I think I see him here, he right said, there. 
go for a drink, <laughs> right? I mean, it's really, I, I think if we, if we apply that and not just, you know, go at each other's throats, that a lot of these things could have potentially been rectified. There's a lot of things in the public record, there were a lot of things in the public record <coughs> that talked about people even within the Recre Recreation Committee thought, you know what, we probably should have brought John in and had the conversation. It's in the public record. Right um, before before voting to ask him to leave, and then waiting two weeks to call chair to chair. Okay, there's lessons here. Okay, there. I think that the rec committee, the, this board, we want to move on, and we want to just right. continue doing the good work. And that Vanessa and Dan, I know, will do with the rec committee. Um, so um, I think that. Well, I'll let Dan speak. Sure. So, shall we move on to <coughs> phase two here? Yes, please. Okay. Can I yeah, suggest I, a short recess? <laughs> um, would you like a recess? Yes. Sure. Um, five minutes? Yep. Okay. Right.
all here? So we're all here. All right. Okay, so continuing this dis discussion, yep. um, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I was able to take a look at our uh, our general policies in specifically sections one and two. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have general operating policies for the board as a whole in section one one four. Yeah, I, I won't repeat those ad nauseum. I think Bob's putting them up on the floor here. One one four is for liaisons, right? No, one one four is general operating policies for the board. Section one pertains to board operating one, one, four, policies. Right. Yep. Section two is. Uh, more for uh, appointed boards, committees, and commissions. Mm -hmm. What I've noted is there, uh, and specifically, there's a code of conduct yep. in our revised section 224, the ones uh, from May 2017 that we revised, that pertain really to boards and committees, but I saw some merit to applying those also to select board liaisons. But, but there are things we can borrow from here and put them into the selectmen's, yep. and things in the selectmen's we can probably borrow right. and put into here. We're not here to do that tonight. That'll take a public hearing and yep. more discussion. Yeah. But uh, those are just some preliminary thoughts of what to do. But I think, uh, as Barry said, good good old common sense and the stuff we all learned in third grade should uh, be the I, rule of thumb. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, yeah um, we, we do have a uh, policy for liaisons that we can yes, maybe pick up and, that, that could, and yeah. translate. So you could put it there too. You and I are working on a subcommittee or on a subcommittee to uh, address Section 2. Am I not right? Uh, you have to refresh my memory. I think you're so right. We discussed that last no, time. No, it is you too. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, be happy. Section to, 2. Yeah. Right. And um, so we'll, we'll get to work on that and, and okay. maybe we can pr propose some of your language. Right. Um, in in the uh, liaison yeah, portion. We'll have to post those yeah, in the please. subcommittee meeting. Right. Yeah, yes, right yes. We, we, it's, it's been a busy summer. Yeah. So, we'll, so we'll I, without further ado, uh, why don't we uh, just take that under advisement? All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dan. Vanessa? Yeah, um, in regards to what the board did or didn't know, uh, there had been a public question about who knew um, about the Recreation Committee's request. Um, I, for one, did not know. Um, and I'd like to make a request from the idea of moving forward um, that we operate with a good faith effort of sharing relevant information with the full board. Uh, I don't think we need a policy for this, but we will make better decisions uh, when we all have and are working with the same information. Um, plus, this would avoid embarrassing after the fact disclosures that come from public records requests. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't think we need a, a policy, but a general agreement that it's best practice um, to share information that we gain um, from our interactions with other um, volunteers when it comes to making our decisions. Mr. Chairman? Yes. It's just one side comment to that. Uh, kind of in light of what we learned from the open meeting situation, sometimes it is good to have one-off meetings with folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in this case, what Barry said, it was, there was an honest attempt by the cha two chairs to work this out on the side, which would ultimately, and should have ultimately been, can, can, maybe that were, that's where we fell down, uh, communicated to the full boards. So uh, I, I wouldn't say that automatically all information flows immediately. Because uh, sometimes there are side discussions among always a sub quorum it, with the best interest of both boards in, in mind. So I, I think you said that in that spirit, but I just. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bob? And if the board wants to communicate with a full membership, I would ask you to do that through me. Um, I, do, yes. I am not covered by open meeting law. I right. can communicate with one or five of you freely. Um, We've learned from Ray um, that open meeting law has evolved, I guess I'll say, in the yeah. last year or two. Yeah. And it's much better, such as the evaluation of the town manager or boards used to do that internally. You really shouldn't communicate. It, it's a risk when you communicate yeah. to each other as a whole. Yeah. Because if, if it stops there, it might be okay. I emphasize might. But if it continues, it probably isn't okay. Right. So if you direct things to me and ask me to send it to the board, I'm happy to do that. Right. Um, but we also, it, open meeting law, it seems simple, but it ain't. And, yep. um, and, and if Bob communicates 
opinions distributes opinions to the board, then the entire board has knowledge yeah, of, the, of the deliberation. Like information, not opinion. Yeah, information, that's not opinion. So, key. so yeah. it's it, you know it's it's challenging, and I also I think in in one thing that may help this is that. Um, you know, e even though it's it's uh, difficult, sometimes we have to talk about difficult things uh, on on the board, and and we should do that. I'd like to do that in in a in a spirit of of uh, teamwork and not pointing fingers. I got you, but um, just trying to improve our process and and, and what we do. So uh, that's that's all I have to say on that. Okay. I'm done. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, moving on to the next agenda item at the recommendation of Bob. Um, I know a lot of you are here for. Um, I'm going to find my agenda. Oh, it's right here. So, we're, I, I hate to do this, I hate to take things out of order, but Bob, Bob has recommended to me, as, as, as some of the more experienced members on the board recommended to me, that people are here for certain things, I'm guessing, and that, um, so we're going to push items C and D, I'm sorry. B and C. B and C, yeah. Uh, preview, preview the warrant for November town meeting and authorize the sale of Brook Street, Redfield Street, subject to November 18th town meeting approval. We're going to we're going to push up the downtown parking discussion. Um, I see Jeans here and ready to go. Um, the downtown, uh, the amplified sound permit request, uh, and then the moratorium uh, issue on a non-emergency gas work. So. I'm hoping that we can, I, my, my guess is that a number of you are here for that. So, Jean. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Jean Delios, Assistant Town Manager. Um, I appreciate the flexibility tonight um, as we have uh, consultants here who um, have a presentation to provide um, on some work that we've been doing uh, for the past five or six months on downtown parking. And um, as we said in uh, one of the pieces in the packet, um, the downtown parking uh, goal of, of getting a, an updated strategy for downtown parking um, really was defined in our economic development action plan and that was uh, three years three years ago uh, when we uh, finalized that plan and this board adopted it um, so we're very pleased that we can uh, bring the consultant team back Nelson Nygaard who did the initial downtown parking study in 2009 and come back and give us a an update um, it's a much um, more limited scope but it's an update on what's happening now in the downtown with parking uh, what are the trends what are the utilizations what are some ideas we should be thinking about essentially it's a refresh um, so I will stop there I could go on and on but I won't um, and I want to introduce uh, Allison Fletcher, who is here from Nelson Nygaard, and Matt Smith, her colleague, who Matt worked with us on the Economic Development Action Plan, so we're having a bit of a reunion tonight. Um, so I'm going to give the floor to Allison, and certainly uh, I'm available for there any questions. And forgive me, I'm going to stand up just to point to Matt and whatnot. Um, thanks, Jean. As mentioned, I'm Allison. Uh, I've been working with Jean for the past few months, um, doing a refresh on what we had done here in 2009. Let's see. Yep. Let's get going. Um, so what we've been doing is looking at parking comprehensively. Parking is sitting in your downtown in and of itself. It's supporting different uses, different economic activity. It's supporting your access system, whether that's people taking the train to downtown, whether they're biking here, whether they're parking their bikes here. Um, and so we've been here and working with the, the traffic and uh, parking committee as well 
um, to look at what is going on in Reading today in relation to parking. Um, we looked again at our past plan and what we've recommended there and our charge to figure out are the recommendations that have been put forth there, have they been um, implemented? To what level have they been implemented and which of those are still relevant based on the conditions we're seeing today? Reading has changed in the past 10 years. Um, and so our data is looking at how much has changed and where. Um, so as mentioned, uh, we collected data here in 2008 um, to publish our 2009 study, which I believe was provided the materials that you have. Um, and then we went out this year on June 14th, while school is still in session, to collect um, additional parking demand data um, across the downtown area. So I'm just going to go through some of those initial findings, um, as well as some of our um, initial recommendations um, related to that and what are the steps going forward from here. Um, so a high level overview, um, when we go and we count, and we walk, we count parking by walking up and down every single street, going in every single lot. Uh, we were here over a number of days collecting just an inventory thing. So what does the downtown look like to an outsider when they come here? When they see the sign, does it make sense to them? Is it intuitive? Is it customer friendly? Does it make Reading a place that you want to be? Um, in total, there are 3,400 parking spaces in the downtown, which is a lot. We work in communities across Metro West. Um, downtown area is very similar to Reading. Um, this is a lot of parking spaces. There's also a lot of off-street parking at currently. Um, of the parking that's there, over 2,000 of those are off-street spaces, and about 1,400 are on-street uh, parallel parking, typically, spaces. Um, we broke it down further. We did a lot of different cross analysis with different types of parking. Uh, with the public parking in the town that you actually own, about 1,000 of those are on street. And then you have, as you know, parking concentrated number of off street lots. Um, you also have some facilities uh, for the respective town halls. And that's parking view control and parking that you, know, you could easily change the regulations of. You also have a number of permit access spaces. Um, you sustain a employee parking program, which was in place when we were here back in 2008. That's still in very high demand. I understand that a lot of those permits sell out every year. Um, and then in terms of private parking, um, there's a lot of different parking by different uses. Um, there's a few off-street spaces owned by the MTA and other users, um, but that's largely off-street spaces. Um, just to compare, um, there's a full appendix in the data that materials that were provided online that shows the entire parking spectrum for the whole day. I'm just going to talk about um, the peak demand here. So this is data from 2008. Um, <coughs> what you're seeing here in the legend, um, blue is like parking that is under 60% full. As you get to green and yellow, parking is starting to um, approach what is like functionally full. So you're able to find a parking space there, but there are a number of cars parked there. When you get to red and pink, um, this is this is the old color spectrum from the old studies. Let me defer on the next slide. Um, that's where you're seeing in some of these areas up like near the MBTA and whatnot. But there's a lot of demand for parking in some of those. So this is the uh, snapshot at 11 a.m. of the study day. So this is, is um, this is the map from the peak. So the peak was from 11 to 2 in the past study. Um, so this shows you okay. the number of blue spaces here in the chart. Is how many cars are parked. The, um, the red here is how many empty spaces mm -hmm. there are. And on the map. Um, the areas that are brighter pink and red are the areas that are very full of cars. Okay. So as it, as it uh, happened in the past, and then also what we're going to see on the next slide, peak utilization is occurring around midday when lunch is happening. We have a peak demand of employees being here, people coming and doing their errands, and people coming to get lunch in the middle of the day. Um, similarly today, a lot of the demand is near the train depot itself. Um, so we still have a similar blue to red color ramp here, slightly less creamy colors. But closer to the downtown area, you're still seeing a lot of demand near the station itself. You're seeing a little bit of on-street demand at peak. This is the busiest time of day on a typical day, I think. You're seeing some on Haven here, and we're seeing a lot of on-street availability in a number of areas, a number of these lighter blue lots you're seeing. Um, less less um, cars parked at certain times of the day. So over the course of the day, at the busiest time of the day, about half of the spaces are full, a little less than half. Um, if we go back and compare, that's a little less demand than we had seen in the past, even though there has been a number of changes um, here. The data from the past study was collected in um, September of 2008. It was collected in June here, um, this time of year, just get based on the calendar of this project. Um, we do these projects at all different times of year in different towns across um, the Metro West area, and we tend to see similar, similar patterns over the time of year. Um, but it's just interesting that demand you know, may have grown in certain particular pockets across the downtown, but we're seeing generally similar trends to what we had seen before, um, which it means that a lot of the past recommendations may still be valid um, based on 
the demand picture that we're seeing in the downtown, even though some practices have changed. Um, this is, these are just some charts comparing some of the patterns. Um, so looking at just public um, parking itself, your off-street lots are very popular. Um, they get pretty full. There's still, of course, 90 to 100 spaces still available even at the busiest times, um, but they're definitely more popular than parking on-street, which is really surprising compared to most towns that we see. Um, we talked with the committee that may be related to people feeling uncomfortable parallel parking because um, cars tend to speed on a lot of streets here. So maybe you feel pressure of somebody driving behind you and you're feeling pressure to get into a spot and you just give up and go to an off-street lot. Um, so we talked about potential ways to do traffic calming in town and that needs to be looked at more com comprehensively, maybe as part of a master planning process. Um, and the private off-street facilities, we broke that down by use. And so customer parking is public facing. It's privately owned, but it's like if you're coming to see the ice other places and you, uh, or, or a, t um, a particular retailer that happens to um, have an attached lot to it, that's, that's what um, a customer comes here and finds is accessible to them. Um, in residential spaces, we saw a lot of capacity in office. And some, what we're seeing here is there's a lot of potential with the lots that you have right now. Uh, the town has adopted shared parking policies and whatnot that needs to do more work on that. Um, the, the data demonstrates there's a lot of potential there. I just really quick, when you say private residential, is that like people's driveways? Or I mean, you're not counting that as available. So we, um, we only counted um, lots that are larger than six spaces. Um, so we're looking at um, off, like off street lots. Um, okay, but, but not like a drive apartment. Not a driveway. Oh, apartment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Or more than six parking spaces. Um, so, and then of course the picture of parking is changing. Uh, we work with the town, they've been giving us an update on how many um, parking spaces are gonna happen with each unit that's, or each um, development that's coming online. Um, there could be as many as 300 additional parking spaces in the, in the downtown um, that'll be provided in conjunction related to those various developments. Um, so this is what we had recommended back in 2009. Um, I'll go through these in a bit more detail on the next slide. Basically, we break things down to try to give the town an implementation plan to go forward uh, with short, medium, and long-term recommendations. Um, short-term recommendations being things that should be low cost and quicker to implement, um, something that can be done in the next year. Medium-term actions, you know, can be more moderate, um, may have a little bit more complexity or might require some fundraising or earmarking of funds, could be done potentially in the next three to five years. Uh, long-term actions in the like five to seven year um, kind of range. Can you define in, in lieu of parking payment? I, it's the bullet down there on the yeah, uh, um, last page. Yeah, we can talk about that okay. um, in the next one here. All right. Um, so this, the red here is what has been implemented to our understanding since the last plan went in place. So in lieu parking has not been implemented um, and it is not still, I think, in our suite of recommendations provided. So I just wanted to give an update or charge us to understand <coughs> what has and has not been implemented. Um, so the employee parking program, we recommended to expand that. And it's our understanding that more permits have become available and have been sold. Uh, we recommended to establish a parking and transportation fund. That's not there yet. Uh, we recommend to adjust time limits. The time limits are still two hour unregulated and unregulated in most on street areas um, across the area. Um, we recommended to expand when parking enforcement hours happen to match when demand is. If demand is happening at dinner hours and one of the particular areas, maybe parking should be enforced at that time, but that's not been changed yet. Um, we also recommended um, to approve parking signage, and that's being evaluated as part of the wayfinding program right now, and we can help provide input on that um, to make more customer-friendly parking, both wayfinding and also when you drive up to a spot, what does it look like, and is this enough for me, and how long can I stay there, and getting that information to when you arrive to a spot. Uh, we recommended to incentivize the sharing of private parking. Um, that has been allowed in zoning, um, and we're working with the town to help them um, we're working with Gene to understand, you know, what needs to get in place to really incentivize that, to make it attractive, to make it feasible, uh, what kind of agreements could be put in place um, to have that be something that the town can take on. We are recommended to establish valet parking regulations and to expand the on-street parking supply um, in places where you could strike more. Um, those have not yet been implemented. Um, the town has reduced parking min minimums, um, but only in this Northwood district, which largely related to the downtown. Um, 
we had recommended establishing an in lieu of parking payment. Um, so a developer would pay a certain fee to the town to make use of public spaces where there is available supply rather than providing it on their site. Um, we also recommended providing some zoning relief for unbundling the cost of parking related to um, the cost of renting or selling a particular apartment. In discussions with Gene, we're taking that off the table um, based on what has been progressing with um, affordable housing developments here. Um, and we also recommended to monitor parking utilization. Uh, once you have this data in place, um, this is something we're going to talk about, but we're, we would sustain that recommendation that once you have the GIS tools in place, um, to continue looking at what is the demand over the course of the year as it changes, especially as you have new developments coming online. Um, in the medium term, we had recommended to initiate a new um, commuter permit program um, related to the MTA lots. Um, we had recommended to conduct a paid parking pilot. Um, so seeing if you did implement paid parking in select areas of downtown, what would be the effect of that? And we had also recommended to develop a commuter benefits program. Um, we understand it has been implemented that there have been more bike racks um, distributed throughout the downtown. The DPW informed us of the standards they've been following, and even following best practice here. Um, we would recommend that that continues to expand um, to provide that option. And then one uh, bus shelter has been installed, um, but the town should continue to work with MBTA um, and with their own resources to continue installing bus shelters here. Uh, we had also recommended in the long term to implement parking maximums. Um, so, you know, we're getting rid of minimums of you have to, we're reducing the amount that you have to actually supply, but if we give a recommendation that you don't provide more than a certain amount, um, that'll make sure that we don't have so much excess parking in the downtown. We have more space for housing and for restaurants and for everything that you want to have as a draw here in downtown. Uh, we also recommended in the longer term to look at demand responsive pricing. So once you have smart meters and smart technology here in place that takes credit cards, that takes pay by phone, in addition to taking quarters, um, you can look at changing the price of the parking related to areas of hotter demand. Um, and we also recommended expanding the walking network because everybody that parks in downtown Reading is also somebody who walks. And we often see this in towns that people like to park where it's easy to walk from the car to where they're going. Often people want to park right in front of their door, or if it's hard to cross the street, that may influence the picture of parking demand. So that's why those two go hand in hand. Um, so working with um, Jane's committee and her staff, um, we've refined these and are presenting these here to you tonight. Um, to look at what would we recommend now in the short term for Reading um, going forward. Um, we would continue to expand the employee parking permit program since it has been so successful and also because there is ample um, on-street supply, um, both, uh, both on and off-street supplies throughout the downtown. Um, so the town can consider increasing, gradually increasing the cost of, uh, or sorry, the supply of permits available in the downtown. Um, and we can work with the town to determine where this can be added, whether that's on or off street. Um, the past study, there's a lot of data in the past study. It's like a 300 page report, but we found um, in studying turnover data of how long people were staying in the downtown, most people stay longer than two hours. And that is a sign that they want to stay here. They want to spend their dollars here. They want to you know, do multiple errands and chain um, what they're doing here in the downtown. Um, and so in relation to that, we would ex recommend extending the limits of um, public parking to three, up to three to four hours um, in some key areas um, to support that desire. Uh, we would also um, explore options for additional longer term parking because there are some people who are hoping to stay all day and um, the town can recommend where are the spaces. They're already doing that through some of the employee permit parking programs, um, but perhaps that could also be provided for people who are going to work uh, you know, in a cafe shop for a longer period in a given day and spend a lot of their money here. Um, we would recommend in the short term to also explore the use of new um, enforcement type technologies um, that does license plate recognition. Um, having this information would be very valuable to the town um, to get on top of their enforcement. Um, handheld devices have become more affordable um, and to, it would be easier for the town to do enforcement in some of the heavily utilized areas having that technology in hand. Um, working with the, the current signage program, we recommend in the short term also updating the signage um, to make it more customer friendly, especially if you're going to be changing how long people can actually stay and park. And downtown is a good time to also think about what do those signs look like and how legible are they, um, whether you're walking or driving or whether you've just parked. Um, and then we 
had also talked about the potential of piloting um, pickup and drop-off zones. Um, so, you know, things like Uber and Lyft and those types of companies, and also taxis, um, compete for curbside uses uh, with parking. Um, and so, there's a number of towns in the area who are piloting a program of designated particular areas, and let it instead of having it be a free-for-all, where people just pick up, drop off wherever. Um, within the app, it gives gives you a designated number of three to five areas where it says go to this area to be picked up. Um, so that's something that the town could, could try out, um, especially because there's a lot of on-street supply at the moment. Um, and then another thing that the town could do very soon that would help a lot in terms of making, reinforcing a customer-friendly parking program here is to provide more information. Uh, we have a great map. Some of the maps are already available online, but making those very easy to find and very um, legible, especially with respect to where the public can park. Um, you could also work to have addresses given to all of the parking lots. Um, so public, the two main parking lots, for example, could have an address. So when people are coming and they're planning to park, maybe it has a name or maybe it also has an address and you can type it into your Google and it can actually get you to the lot rather than trying to guess which streets do I go down and missing it on the one-way circuit to get to your lot itself. Um, a number of towns have also been working and partnering with businesses and having postcards uh, with information about parking on it. Um, so while people are coming out of the coffee shop, they grab a postcard and next time I come here, I get smarter where I can actually park because um, not everybody's on the web. Um, so that's what we would recommend in the short term. Um, in the medium term, um, we think the town should focus on um, expanding the walking network. Um, some of this can be done through simple striping and improved crosswalks, um, but focusing on places where you can improve accessibility to and from parking lots. Um, we would continue mark monitoring parking realization. We can get the GIS database. There's now a lot of online GIS apps where with your phone you can readily update how full or empty are the, the street segments and the lots. Um, and so we'd like to give the tools to the town so that they can continue to evaluate that and try to monitor where is stuff getting beyond functionally full capacity. Um, there's a number of areas where on-street parking supply could be added. We talked to the DPW staff about places where maybe um, angle parking could be further expanded and piloted or maybe combined in a traffic calming program um, to see if more supply can be added in certain areas. Um, and then as mentioned, we're going to be working with Gene to give her the tools to incentivize shared parking and having the right resources so that the town is ready to go forward with that now that it's in the zone. Um, the town should continue to work um, to implement low-cost bicycling facilities. Again, this is just striping often, um, or also providing bike parking. Um, bike parking near the station, near the businesses. There's a lot of new cafes and whatnot coming on town, downtown, and MAPC and other programs um, provide support and um, guidance on how to do that. Um, I think that is mostly it for me and for the other. Uh, we already talked about bus shelters, but also um, the valet permit parking. That's something that could potentially be piloted. Um, it could be something that's potentially um, championed by a private owner um, on private property, something that the town could consider. And in the longer term, uh, we still we wouldn't recommend moving towards meters and pricing and demand-based parking in the short to medium term. That's still, from what we're seeing in the data, a longer term picture um, kind of thing. The town could work on piloting um, something, but um, we would recommend that be a more like a five years out, and also if you see it in the data, five years out um, kind of measure. Um, so that could vary. I mean, and also the, the technology for these things is just changing rapidly, both with the vendors and like what is available to do parking. Um, so that probably be a combination of smart meters and kiosks and pay by phone for the next five years. Um, there could be some more technology built online as well. Um, and once warranted, um, and once um, there is increasing on-street supply, we would recommend increasing the price of employee permits, um, just because there's increasing demand for it. and so. That should go hand in hand and monitor that data over time. Uh, we would also, once you are paying for parking in downtown, uh, we would recommend establishing a parking and transportation fund where the dollars that are collected through that parking program are also reinvested in the maintenance and operations of the program itself and also in supporting things, whether it be bike racks, whether it be the walking connections, restriping crosswalks, connecting to the parking lots. Um, 
And once funding is available, we would recommend also extending the parking enforcement hours to reflect when there's areas of highest demand. Um, that might possibly be evenings or weekends. A number of towns are moving towards that. Um, uh, in the longer term, too, there may be, now that there's going to be more retail and other um, uses coming downtown, looking at with this added business activity that's coming downtown, there may be some new measures in terms of uh, monitoring and regulating um, commercial loading and when that happens and where that happens. Um, that's just another long-term consideration. Um, and the three other things kind of all go hand in hand is that uh, we would recommend looking at circulation at a larger level as it relates to the parking system itself. Looking at the one-way street, one street system, um, how that uh, comes back to walking safety, how that comes back to parking access, um, where are there potentials for road diets or traffic calming in the downtown to make it more appealing to cross the street, um, and also to keep people here in downtown. Um, and then, you know, once there's more demand and once you have um, a lot more activity going on in the downtown area, what is the demand for having more people biking in the downtown? Um, and is there any potential to provide facilities for that? Because um, everybody that bikes is one less person driving their car and parking in the downtown. So um, with that, those are the, the draft recommendations that we presented. Um, we're going to be working with Gene. We're going to be on the agenda at the Economic Development Committee meeting on October 17th at 7 p.m. Um, and then we'll be working with Gene to continue refining these recommendations. So. Thank you. Uh, does the board have any questions? Yes. I think John has had a John? Um, so, I, I, kind of throughout your presentation, you talked a lot about the creation of, of on street parking. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we can't make any more pavement. And, you know, I, I, and I alluded to the fact that maybe there's some spots we could angle park, which, you know, allows you to get more cars in. Can you elaborate on the expansion of off-street parking for me? I'm, I'm a little stuck because I know there's a finite amount of space. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of areas um, the DPW had pointed out, like on Haven Street, where the street curb to curb is somewhat wide for one-way circulation. So you could pilot having an angled parking, which would get you a lot more capacity. Oh, on one cars. side, yeah. On one side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if you had parallel but parking. that's where we are right there, right? Um, this is actually in front of Cafe Miro right now. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. But but there's angle parking also on Haven Street. Right? On the end. Yeah. Yeah, but DBW <coughs> believes there's there's potential for expanding where that type of supply layout happens on the street. Um, there could be a number of areas also where you may be strength, uh, striping the length of parking, and maybe the length of parking is really long, and you could evaluate maybe making it a little bit shorter. Um, it down to like 18 to 20 feet rather than a 25 feet to gain supply on particular blocks. Um, and if also, if there is a um, traffic or mobility study looked at at all, if there's any excess uh, lane capacity in any areas, of which the DPW traffic engineers believe there may be in some areas, then that means you have pavement available for other uses. And is it going becoming angle parking um, or is it becoming something else? So, just one other, one other quick question, and then I'll then I'll be quiet. Um, your presentation makes me think that at the peak time, half the parking yeah. spaces are. I mean, that happens yeah. to be my personal mm -hmm. experience that I, you know, getting a parking spot. But I, I I hear anecdotally all the time about it. But it sounds like you're telling us it's not really. We really do have substantial parking. You know, I mean, the municipal lots, for example, um, based on what I think I saw up there, and you can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, there's a lot of space in the municipal lots at peak time. Yeah. Which is, I think, most of us probably would have not expected that. But, I mean, I'm guessing this stuff is telling the truth, right? I mean, public off-street parking <coughs> in its at its at its at its peak is has 90 spaces yeah, yeah it's um, there's also there's more detailed numbers in the 2008 report yeah. as well but it the general trend also matches what we saw in the past as well and um, 
you know, anecdotally, yes, people may have difficulty parking on a particular block on a particular day, but having better information, having the data organized um, is going to help improve that picture. Well, it sounds like if you walk 200 feet instead of 20, <laughs> well, that's, parking well, no, is probably not as big a problem as, it might, as we might think it is. If you think of the, kind of the, the culture of parking, right? So, you know, people will say, I went down Haven Street, um, and I couldn't find a spot because I wanted to go to the frame store. I was making that up. Um, and there was no, nothing left on Haven Street. And they have to go around there. They say there's no parking. So when in fact, if you go, anybody go to Davio's, yep. right, in Market Street, you probably have to walk twice as far from the right. parking space that you have. But because your mindset is like, all right, I'm in the parking lot. I'm already here. So if we change the culture of like, okay, if you walk, 200 feet, 300 feet. Well, if you wanted feet. to go to the frame store and you couldn't find a spot in front of the frame store, the municipal lot probably has 20 spaces. Right, but you couldn't find a spot in front of the frame store, so now you think, oh, there's no parking. But in reality, you walk further yes. at a Davio's or a Legal C or whatever than you would if you parked on the next street. So it's sort of change, it's it's changing the mindset and maybe having the signage better, where people realize, okay, I'm not going to get the spot in front of the store, but I know there's one and a half a block away, and then you know you sort of feel better about it. Um, I think is part of it. Do stores? I, I've never noticed this, but do stores ever say parking available in a municipal lot? Sure. I mean, it seems like that's a culture change that you're talking about, Barry. And I think you're right that it's a you know you you kind of gotta readjust how people look at things. Um, anyway. Uh, I think Dan has sure. hand up. Yeah. yeah, I have a generic question. Uh, so we've seen a number of uh, near-term, me medium-term, long-term uh, ideas. Each of those groups of items needs to be turned into some kind of prioritized action plan because there will be some actions this board will have to take, maybe some town meeting will have to take. How is that process going to go roll forward? Uh, will your staff begin that? So, uh, well, do you have a plan for that? Sure. Yeah. I think the um, the next critical path item is to have a community forum on this. Yeah, after and that. And when we meet in October, this was really kind of the preview. Mm -hmm. um, What's, what do you want to get out of that forum? I think we want to have the businesses represented. Yeah, that's key. Um, that's one of the main goals. And I've talked individually with a lot of the business people. It, I get it. It's hard to make meetings. Um, especially as an entrepreneur, it's, it's very difficult. But if uh, we've given lots of notice, um, and the word is out now for October 17th, and hopefully we can get our community partners and stakeholders, business representatives and other property owners, um, it, 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 people that live in the area, to come and be part of this conversation so that we can figure out what can we do and what can we prioritize okay. that the community would be supportive of? So you're going to have interactive sessions in, in that uh, forum on the 17th? We're going to have a couple of things on the agenda. Okay. Um, and we haven't quite worked through all the the way we're going we're to get to that. But I think getting some feedback would be really helpful um, yeah. before we get too far down the road. So Gina, uh, to that thought about like kind of organizing what the 17th would look like, I, um, you know, we were just talking about before, I was at CPDC last week, they talked about kind of, you know, the 40 art district um, uh, design guidelines. I, I would hope that we would invite CPDC to that meeting because one of the things, you know, when we've been now vetting projects, right, we've been vetting projects, okay, Gould Street, what are you going to do for the market, right? But what we haven't done, because now we do have a critical mass of project developments, is now to think about design guidelines that say, you know, give them incentive for doing some type of a shared parking arrangement now because a lot of the times their spaces may not be utilized or sharing parking between two projects and trying to, f to figure that out because right now we just do it project by project and so if we're going to be redoing design guidelines it might be important to kind of have them there so we can maybe look at some sort of more strategic parking strategies when it comes to vetting individual projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I could just comment on that, 
the um, the models that we've been looking at, um, some of the area communities do this where, um, you know, we have a bank that closes at 5 o'clock, and then we have restaurants that get busy at 6 o'clock. Um, wouldn't it be great if we could have an arrangement where those restaurant goers could use the bank parking lot? Yeah. I'm and sure the bank would say yes if the restaurant banks at that bank. Right? <laughs> well, the model that we're looking at is where the municipal government actually becomes the um, the conduit through which that arrangement is established. Yeah. And we absorb the, the uh, all of the liability. Mm -hmm. We absorb oh, everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we important. are leasing, I'll pick on <coughs> Eastern Bank. We The town is leasing Eastern Bank's parking lot from Eastern Bank from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then and the town is yeah. in turn subleasing to yeah. what? Yeah. And it's done in a number of other communities, and Nelson Nygaard has pulled all those legal documents so we know how to do it. Can we do that on the MBTA lots, too? Uh, we actually get the MBTA Vine Street lot for a, um, a dollar a year, and uh, it's uh, 43 parking spaces. Wow. Um, I wanted to acknowledge Vanessa. Um, so, Dan, you asked my question, so Jane, oh, thank you for right. answering it. Um, but as far as... Um, um, I'm the liaison to RMLD, and um, Dave Talbot, who's a commissioner there, uh, mentioned the idea of partnering with the town to establish uh, electric charging stations in the downtown area or at the T um, parking. And so I think as we discuss this, if that's the future of motor vehicles, then perhaps that's an avenue we can pursue to as we're discussing the plan as a whole. That, that's, um, so I used to be the track, director of traffic parking in Salem. Um, so when it comes to implementation for things like that, there's actually many grant programs that you can actually apply for that can actually assist with that, and maybe do some pilots. But I think if you're looking at the idea of looking at changes in timing and different regulations, um, you obviously will have to look at that um, as um, the governing entity and when it comes to ordinance and things like that, depending on how it is. So the best way to do it is really to take these recommendations, those short-term particular, and kind of do a package, because I think you really nailed it. People have to start thinking of downtown as one whole parking system, not as there's a lot here, a lot here, a lot there. They need the whole way. So that's the whole communications. Um, Salem, for instance, has a postcard, has a website called Parking in Salem. It has um, various things. Like those are um, implementation measures that I actually can bring to the table as part of this um, and work with our team. It's all about the entire package. I mean, so I can just speak to you. You're at a point, I think you're probably starting to hit maybe a tipping point soon with a lot of development. Ten years ago, I'm also not going to study for Salem. I was involved with some of the, the I would say, the re-implementation as Salem grew so much to the point we had to take the exact strategies again and start like revising how we were managing that parking. It is very delicate. Parking's emotional. That's why people think there's no parking. There is parking. They don't get right in front of that location they want. They get upset. But yeah, they get upset when there's no knowledge of what, where to go next. Yeah, right. So that's what I mean by thinking of that long term. Allison really hit it. Circulation's important. When you get down the street and there's no parking, all of a sudden you know there's parking on the corner, or you might be, but then you have a one-way street and you have to go up. So you might even want to be thinking of some of those pairs. Um, I was thinking of the municipal lot behind the CVS. Like, it's a one-way in. There's plenty of room to do a one-way in and one-way out. Um, so, I mean, if you think of those things... Try that at town meeting already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's just why saying, Bill's these struggling. are things you should really be challenging to get people to rethink, because that can be part of your problem. Because if some people think it's, a, it's inconvenient to go one way or the other, they're not going to want to park there. And that's going to hurt your businesses. I agree with and that. I'm an old economic development planner, so I'm about bringing transportation and economic development together. It's not, they're not exclusive. They have to be done in conjunction. And so I think that's something that we can really work with you to say. think about. Um, and I'm sure you're aware we have a number of uh, 40 R um, projects going up in the downtown area. They will. Um, they will be filled with businesses that's going to attract more more downtown parking, which is what we want. But um, so I guess I would ask Gene or Bob or you how the uh, development summit will be structured. 
Um, I, I can start the answer. It started tonight with one of the board's feedback. What areas do you think you have concern in, the community would have concern in? I think Gene hit on the most important point. It's not a top-down presentation of the community. It's what does the business community want. Yeah. They have to be a very loud partner. In this. Right. They can't come in later and say, well, why did right. you do this? Why didn't you do that? Yeah. We have to hear from them now. Because if we're going to start yeah. making changes, they need to be changes. And Gene and I know from experience, not every there's not going to be any change that's unanimous in the business district. Yeah. So there's going to be some that are uh, favored by some businesses, not by others, and that's okay. Um, but there's no sense in us having a top-down lecture. Uh, we need to have a community discussion. So that's the only theme that I've had. Um, and we really wanted to bring this to you now to give us time to plan on October meeting as to the component. So you know, I don't expect it now, but I'd welcome every board member's feedback and thoughts about yeah. what should the meeting have or not have. Uh, yeah. I, Bob, and I'll float this out to the other members now. Perhaps a similar presentation that was given tonight with options on addressing the problem be given to everyone who comes to the economic development um, okay. summit. And, and that way they're given uh, a number of choices on how to keep, how we can keep up with park. You know, I've also thought, I haven't shared it with staff yet, we have all those voting tools. Those yeah, I was thinking of that. Yeah. That we oh. in town meeting to survey people. Yep. What do you think about this? Do think Don't miss an opportunity. Yeah. So how does the board feel about that sort of structure for the meeting so that the business thing. community gets the ideas of the options sure. and then they have input as to what options they sort of That's great. Would be interested in. I mean, in the business community, they're going to, I mean, they're, depending on where your store is, they're going to have very widely different, you know, yeah. if, you're, if, you, if you run the convenience store, you don't want two-hour parking in front of the convenience store. You want that turned around. And obviously, we want to encourage people to stay downtown. But then I've heard other people say, you know, people park here and then now, you know, it doesn't turn over fast enough. And, you know, but maybe if we had, you know, better wayfinding so that people knew that, okay, you can just go around the corner and there's another park at the spot. That, that might work. So you're going to get, I think we're going to get a lot of different opinions um, from the business community about what the right solution is. Yeah. Um, and uh, so. Hopefully compromise will. Yeah. And, and wayfinding. Yeah. Bill. Andy. Um, I didn't think I was taking public comment on this, but okay. I, I uh, forgot. I'll, I'll give my public comment anyway, so that. Uh, route, 30, route 28 was finished in 1930. Mm -hmm. 1931, they started having parking problems and traffic problems. Right? So, it hasn't been changed since then, so I don't think you guys are going to change it. I think you're going to waste a hell of a lot of money and time. Right. And well, we will try not to, and we will try to yeah. Yeah, improve it. We're not going to solve it. I think yeah. you're right. Every report since 1931 said the same thing. Yeah. Turned yeah. out some amount of time wasted. And all the respect to the experts. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. And the experts are going to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah, okay. Just, um, one other thought about it. I know you sort of talked about sort of paid parking kind of down the road. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed today, but if you're going, um, if you're going uh, down Woburn Street, there's the MBTA lot on the left as you're going downtown. That was $4 parking. It is now $6 a day parking. So there is a tendency now for, for people to realize that there, you know, that paying for parking close to where you want to be, that, um, that obviously they don't raise the prices, they don't think people are going to pay it. So I think we should look at sort of monetizing some of the, you know, especially around the commuter rail. I know we have that, look, that it's going to force us to look at the stickers again. I was just going to raise um, that a little bit off topic, but we do, yeah. we, we promised we would do a one year review of that, I think. Right. Yes, so we the did. time is coming up. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. So, you know, the fact that they raise the prices means that, you know, they realize that there's a demand and, you know, and a cost to maintaining those lots. So, you know, we have to kind of look at that too. And, and then, you know, that, that has an implication for during the day downtown parking. So it, it is related to Yeah. Bob, in regards to the, the um, in, in increased fees for the d depot and um, in, in the next meeting or two, as Dan recommended, could we have an update on how many permits have been sold and, and, and where, where we are at that? 
Um, we could do that. Um, I'll have to talk to the chief, but my gut feel is February is a better time because so many people buy it for the annual pass. Um, right. We can give you an update anytime. Yeah. Let me talk to the chief. Well, but but it's been implemented since February, right? Since last, since two, in the winter. 2017. Yeah. So um, that's that's when people yeah. started sending me emails when they went right, in to get there. Oh, so it goes February to February, no, not, not by calendar, calendar year. year. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying that in December you start seeing people advance purchase for the next calendar year, right. Right? and that continues into January. So it depends how you want to handle it. All right. So you're saying we're going to do this another year? It's kind of baked in right now. I think you'd get a cleaner picture in February right. than you would in December. So we have two years of data, essentially. Well, I, a year and a couple months. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I'll ask the chief. I could. Be wrong. Okay. Does that sound good for the board? I know it wasn't on the agenda, but no. but it yeah. is related. Okay, um, I'd like to move on if we could. Any any other? Yes. Thank you. Ian Dula, Rock, Front 19 Main Street. I have a business on Route 28, and <clears throat> some of the concern I have is the two-hour park, and I know you talked about maybe making it three or more in some areas, but I'm fortunate enough to have a couple of 30-minute spots, and my next-door neighbor, dry cleaner, he has two-hour spots in front of his. He, he'd like to have 15-minute spots. So yeah. I, I would like you to think about going the other way in certain instances as well. I think that would help some of our businesses too. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, I, I hope, hopefully the Economic Development Summit will bring some, you know, help, help us resolve and address some of these issues. Okay. Yeah, um, it wants to be more in the system than right. is there. Thank you very much Thank for coming. You. Excellent, e excellent right. presentation. Thank you, Gene. And if I could just recognize Andrew Nichol, I forgot to mention his name. He's our staff planner, and um, this is his first Board of Selectmen meeting, so I want to stand thank out. him for coming. Stand up. Yeah. 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 Next time, sit in the front so we can see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to me to embarrass you. No. Thanks, that, thanks for pointing that out, Gene. Before we move on to our next <laughs> agenda item, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, report on something that happened to me when I was coming back from the men's room. A man rather aggressively told me it was time for me to step down from chair and um, and that the the um, that we needed a real leader in this position. Uh, this concerns me because it's a, it's a rather aggressive thing to say to a town volunteer. Um, w w we all have feelings, although sometimes it might not see it. Um, and, and, and John, Vanessa, Barry, Dan, and myself, we all put a lot of time into getting elected, um, and we all put a tremendous amount of work into doing this job as best as we can. So, um, yeah, that's just, I, I hope I that mean, that's uh, that's just unfortunate. I, you yeah, know, yeah. it's it's you know we spent half an hour talking about how we as a board of selectmen are going to work with volunteers, and and I made it I I made it what I thought was a joke, which is you know you can beat up on us, right? Because it's part yeah, of the well, job. There you go. You know what? I was really it was if that if that <laughs> thanks, that thanks, started Mary. that. I apologize. No, I don't. But it's 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 just not right. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, everybody here earned the right to be here. Yeah. Right, and so um, you know, people are entitled to their opinions, but you know, rudeness is just not—it's just not the way to be. So no. I, yeah. I'm sorry that that happened. Yeah. I, I, it's a, I mean, I'm gonna right. cry right. myself to sleep at right. night, but but <laughs> but I I want the public to know that that if any board member reports that sort of behavior to me, we, we will follow it up. It's just uh, we, can't, we can't tolerate. Um, Okay, next topic. Um, amplified, sound. amplified sound permit request, Saturday Night Lights. It's got a great sound. Mr. McFadden, Mr. McFadden. Mr. McFadden. Mr. McFadden. Ubiquitous Mr. McFadden. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, <coughs> my presentation, Bob said this should be about 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm going to try to get down about 45 <laughs> seconds if that works for you there. I got the um, timer if you want. Please, please. Um, Carl McFenn, um, one of uh, the owners of SNL Saturday Night Lights uh, football. Um, this is our sixth year. Uh, first year we had 200 kids this year. We made some adjustments. We'll probably have about 920. <laughs> the exciting part is um, the biggest growth are the young ladies. Mm. Um, 
we actually have the largest in town girls program in New England. Really? Um, yeah, I think there's only two towns that do it. So yeah. one out of two is in there. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but seriously, we have, we're going to have close to 250 girls, young young ladies, yeah. down there playing, and they're pretty ruthless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it isn't even so much the young ladies; it's the mothers that usually are the coaches, and they, they get into it, which is exciting. Um, one of the things that has made our program so successful um, is the fact that we like have a, a carnival type of atmosphere from um, a DJ playing. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm here. Um, uh, as well as, um, you know, we have sausage vendor, fried dough vendor. Mm -hmm. Parents are just down there having fun. Yeah. Kids have so much structure in their lives, and this is just fun. No winners, no losers. They, they go down there, and, you know, back in the days where everyone's trying to make the travel team, you have the kids that never played a sport before down there playing, and that's the exciting part. Um, one of the things every year we do is take on a cause. Two years ago, it was the food pantry. Last year, it was the Mission of Deeds, and it was actually the largest fundraiser, shall we say, for the Mission of Deeds. Oh, I think there was 500-plus items donated to that. Um, which we enjoy. A um, couple other things that we always do, one to benefit um, the fireworks. I believe the money goes to that. The Friends of Reading football is we have a mother-son, mother-daughter game on a Friday night. And again, mother the mother, son. the mothers actually do get aggressive with the children you know, um, <laughs> from that aspect of it. Uh, and the other thing that we always do is, you know, I call it the Red Cross game. It's um, the Thursday before, excuse me, the weekend before Thanksgiving where um, a couple of years ago we had a, a teacher who passed away at Josh Whedon and they did uh, the the fathers got together to uh, do a fundraiser to help the family and uh, last year one of our first coaches passed away and um, we did a, 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 all the proceeds go from that and it, typically it's around twenty five thousand dollars that's raised the reason we call it the Red Cross game is because it's people like my age that think they can still play <laughs> and pull hamstrings and the sprained ankles so everyone needs medical attention after it so uh, which is great so we, we like to always do something to giving back to um, the community um, one, one of the biggest things again is that the local businesses actually thrive off of this because if you uh, typically, from what I've spoken to, the food establishments, because obviously it's on Saturday nights, about half an hour after a session ends, because each session goes an hour and 15 minutes, you have the Capris, the Pizza Worlds, the Chilies. They just get flooded. Yep. If you go in there, the kids are wearing their game shirts. Yep. People are seeing, hey, I haven't seen you all week. You know, a neighbor, hey, you want to go grab a pizza, yep. that type of stuff. So which is nice, really building a uh, community part of it. Um, we're requesting our sound permit, which we've had every year. We've never uh, knock on wood had any issues with... Um, with parents, uh, we've actually perfected being able to uh, amplify all of Birch Meadow with one speaker. Mm -hmm. And how we did it was, I'm an accountant, I had no idea, but we had someone, a, a young high school student who was in so music, knew exactly what to do, said get, get up on the press box platform mm -hmm. and bounce it off the wall. Mm -hmm. And it ended yeah. up getting that way. So we ended up get instead of directing it towards okay. mm -hmm. Arthur B. Lord Drive, Excellent. that Coolidge, that area, we're actually bouncing it off the wall to come back to get turf two and the multi-purpose yeah. so uh, on the softball field. Um, so we're just asking for kind of our annual permit, shall we say. Yeah. Um, this is for how many nights? We go eight eight weeks. We start the first, uh, excuse me, the, the Saturday after Labor Day, so the eighth, which is the second Saturday. And knock on wood, we finish by um, Halloween. But if we get rained out, we usually go one week. We've never gone more than say the second week of uh, November. We we end up losing a week because they have a band competition, which is enjoyable because I live on Wakefield Street, which is about a mile and a half away, and I can hear the competition going pretty well. Um, so, you know, we, we've never really had issues with that. We go from 4 o'clock to 9. Employment-wise, uh, I think we've hired 95 high school kids to work. Yeah. And then we keep getting calls and calls, which is great. Yeah. And we just keep, uh, you know, getting them in there and the kids get some responsibility. But it also helps the kids, uh, the high school kids realize they're role models because when you're refereeing a kindergarten, first grade game, the little kids looking up to them, they realize they got to, you know, yeah. act a certain way uh, for them. And uh, we haven't had any issues with uh, coaches because we explained to them that Belichick works down in Foxborough, <laughs> not at uh, <laughs> Turf 2, shall we say. Um, so it's been it's been uh, exciting. We enjoy the police department come down a lot of times because they're like no one's in town, everyone's down there. Yeah. 
we'll have between almost four between four and forty five hundred people down there during that time which is uh which is great do you ever think of having a fire department police department game again yeah. well, we have to consider injuries <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who's going to cover workman's comp yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> that's probably the uh the overtime that was the uh most say pleasant part of the evening so far. Thank you. Yeah, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's so for, again, we, for doing yeah, we, we invite everyone down there. Again, you got to understand this is your program in terms. This is a writing rec program. Mm -hmm. We're the vendor that yep. runs it. So any feedback that you'd like to see improved, enhanced, reduced, love to have it. Well, or, other than suggesting that we have a select board team, sure. uh, obviously. Um, uh, any other thoughts? I, I can see the halfback right oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and have the ambulance waiting. No, yeah. I, I, any, any, Dan, yeah. Barry? Just that we need to call for a motion on the amplified sound. It's in our packet. All right. Here. Anyone else? John? Vanessa? Okay. It's a fabulous program that is Pros great for the community and has yeah. been from the day, from the, the year it started. Just yeah. glad to see it growing. Thank yeah. you. Great to see young yeah, people great, out. Great to come back home on, and watch it in full force on a Saturday night. Yeah. You know, it's really a family night. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing that's yeah. different than many of the programs. Yeah. And, and, and one thing that's nice is, it, like, for instance, Chief Segal is down there with his son. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And you, you see him. You know, yeah. he's not in uniform. He's a regular person. Mm -hmm. it, you know, seeing the different forms or different teachers and, yeah. and town workers and stuff like that. So it yeah. really is a community. Yeah. That's very valuable for the kids. Okay. Um, so a motion. Uh, move that the board approve the amplified sound request from Saturday Night Lights. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Carol. Good luck. Um, next up. The uh, National Grid, Natural Gas Work, Non-Emergency National national, uh, natural Gas. I have to give a, a, a brief introduction because, excuse me, we, we um, requested feedback from town council on this. And uh, Dan, I, I think everyone has seen it, right? I, I, I'm not sure. I think if they did. Uh, August 17th letter from Ray, you might want to put that up. I, don't oh. know. Yeah, I, I think it was because I almost responded to everybody. And and, and, and and so everybody knows you You asked me to help you on this. Yes. So we, we kind of kept it just to the two. Yep. To, to devise some plans for the board to vote you on. You know if that was in your packet? I didn't there see it. There was a... Um, Email. The, re oh. the resolution was in the pack. Yeah, but I, I don't resolutions there. I did not see a letter from Ray. Yeah, I, I must have missed it. Okay. Oh, okay. I, that has not been circulated among us. Yeah. It, it, I, I, has it? I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have not seen it that I'm aware yeah. of. If I could, can I help with any of this from, from the union? Yeah. Just just one second. I want to get our business uh, um. straight. Um, I, John, I, I will uh, I can double, email too, double check. Um, I can go get it and put it up. But the gist of the town council's advice. Yeah, right here. Um, what, yeah, what date was that? Because you requested Bob send that to eight, the board. Eight, it's 817. Can you? Um, so it yeah. didn't make the packet. Uh, uh, yeah, so it was, but it's it was, around. It was sent right, out. because. But isn't Ray's kind of. The right. gist of Ray's letter kind of in this reworked. Yes, yeah, so today. Right. it was MSG. Right, so, yeah. so um, originally Dan and I were talking about a compromise situation oh, it's just where we would have, because yeah. safety is the real concern to us, we're reluctant to get involved in union. Um, but safety is the concern, and, and we originally had wanted to uh, require the utility to um, to inform the customer that uh, re that replacement workers, I think, was the term we ended up with. Uh, were being used to do the work. Town council advised us that this would be a moratorium or uh, require adding something, adding the sort of requirement to a permit uh, would be difficult to, to defend in his opinion. So what you see, what's, what's come out in the packet, um, and, and uh, I don't know if Bob can bring it up on the screen. 
Yeah, we're working on it here. Oh, actually, it's all in front of you. I think. Oh, yeah, we have gone. Oh, you do have it? Yeah, I, I, okay. passed, I passed it out. Uh, I, I can just uh, quote yeah. some excerpts from it. Yeah. So this, this began as a, looking at this as a potential moratorium. Uh, and we did receive a communication from Ray Miars uh, of uh, Miars and Harrington, our town council. Uh, Bob, we have a number of different types of permits that involve gas. Grants of location, known as in Reading as pole and gas permits. And this, I think it's important to go through. I'll try to yes. keep it brief. Uh, pole and gas permits are issued by the select board. Street opening per permits are issued by the engineering department. Site plan approvals are issued by CPDC or planning staff. Building permits issued by the commissioner of buildings, uh, building inspector, and plumbing permits issued by the plumbing inspector. Each of these permits involves the application of certain established standards, which may derive from statutory or regulatory requirements. But in general terms, assuming that requ the requirements are satisfied, applicants are entitled to receive their permits. The select board wants to adopt a policy placing a moratorium on the issuance of some or all permits that involve gas. It needs to understand that if, a pol if that policy is challenged, it will be very difficult to defend since, by hypothesis, the moratorium would prevent issuance of permits to persons who are fully qualified to receive them. This is the key paragraph. In addition, many of the permit granting officials listed above derive their power from state law or town bylaws, not the select board. Therefore, the select board does not have any actual authority to place a moratorium on such permits. Finally, it appears that the moratorium at issue here is directed only at national grid employees and contractors, not others. The purported justification for this focus is that the regular union workers are better qualified to do the work in a safe manner than the replacement workers. Well, I think this is probably true. I'm having trouble seeing how that fact can be translated into a moratorium. If work is to be undertaken by fully licensed gas work, uh, a fully licensed gas worker, I think that we have to assume that an acceptable level of safety will be achieved. Even if we think that every union worker is better qualified than his or her replacement, it is a slippery slope for the town to get into the business of making judgments about the relative qualifications of otherwise fully licensed workers. Uh, as a result of that email, uh, the thrust uh, changed to uh, a more of a recommendation uh, that a warning be issued. You know, well, the, there's a draft that Andy and I have come up with, have gone back and forth to town council, yeah. and we have it up here. Uh, the key, there are several whereases here which are kind of derived from other documents that we've seen. <coughs> Uh, and the uh, be it therefore resolves are the important ones here that the Reading Select Board urges National Grid to end the lockout of its gas workers <coughs> so the gas line inspection services and repairs may continue to be performed by qualified and properly trained employees and be it fairly, further resolved that the Reading Select Board strongly urges National Grid to disclose in writing to affected property owners whenever it is using replacement workers for gas line inspection services and repairs thus leaving it up to the property owner to yeah. make the call. Yeah. And be it fur further resolved that the Reading Select Board urges National Grid to agree to a fair and equitable contract that provides for competitive wages and benefits commensurate with the technical skills and qualifications possessed by the members of United Steel Workers, Local 12003, District 4, Boston Gas Workers Union. So that is what you have before you uh, as a suggested motion tonight, obviously subject to the, the will of the board and any amendments that you may care to offer so um, so we can move for further Dan um, can you propose this as a motion so that we may sure I will deliberate move, I will move and I guess this is known as version 3 of the uh, draft mm -hmm. resolution in support of United Steelworkers District 4 local 12003 1203 however you say it. Boston Gas Workers Union uh, be adopted uh, by the select board. Is this okay. the, the thing that was at our place tonight? Yes. Yes. The, is that the one yes. that you just read? So that yeah, is, I know you said there's three versions. But this is the third, and that's the one town council The other reviewed. ones have not come out. The town well, council. One of them was in our packet, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it an earlier one. I assume that's version one. Uh, that that uh, might have been one. Yeah. That, that was a. Uh, shouldn't have been set out because we were still well, having conversations yeah. with the lawyer. Um, and, and Ray 
Okay, so harm, no foul, but yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Perfect world. So yeah. this is what we um, were able to come up with with Ray's right. recommendations. He had some edits uh, that we incorporated, and um, Dan and I thought it would be a good place to start mm -hmm. um, the discussion. So, so I've made that motion. Yeah, so second. he's made a second. Okay, so, so um, l let's talk about this. So, Barry and then Vanessa. Oh, okay. um, I mean, this is, I, I mean, I read the first version and, and you know, while um, I liked a lot of it in there, mm -hmm. I just sort of thought, like, how, how do we even enforce that? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, you know, the fact that we turn it now that we're encouraging, first of all, we're, still, we're encouraging National Grid to let these guys go back to work, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, but, it, you know, which is the most important thing. But also, too, I'm assuming that when, you know, somebody calls National Grid and they show up, they just assume it's the regular guys. And I think it's important that the homeowner or the business owner, whoever it is that's engaging them, know that, you know, these aren't the regular guys, these are the replacement workers. So then that family, that business owner, that concern can make the choice about, well, you know what, I don't need it right away. I, I want to wait to the to the, you know, the A-team is back, um, you know, in the fold. So I, I like that idea, and it's not, you know, and it's encouraging them. It's not something that we can, yeah. can't enforce it, but at least we're on record. Um, I do want to make one um, amendment to this, mm -hmm. um, and it's not in the body of the, of the motion itself, mm -hmm. but actually in the title. Uh, oh. We're calling it a resolution in support of the United Steel Workers District 4. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of alluded to it earlier, Andy, about sort of how, you know, we're sort of reticent to get involved in, mm -hmm. you know, um, collective bargaining negotiations between a private entity and, and a union. That's not our role. Right. But our role is to protect the health and safety yes. of the town of Reading. So I would hope that this is viewed as a friendly amendment that yeah. we just strike the title of this, uh -huh. uh, a, resolution in, uh, a resolution to support the health and safety, uh, to, to promote health and safety in Reading. Do you want to specify in regard to gas or um, something? In, in, in regard to gas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, so we're not, we're not doing it. In, I mean, obviously, we want uh, if the workers go back to work and there's a contract, that's great. Mm -hmm. But we're not doing this to support the worker. We're doing this to support safety and red. I, so I get it. Mover has no objection yeah. to the seconder. Yeah. You were no. the last part, the health and safety. Uh, regarding gas installation oh, there you go. in the okay. town. Right. Um, who seconded to this? I think Vanessa did. Vanessa, are you okay with that change? Yes. Okay. Uh, discussion. Yes, now, so, so. On the amendment, work further. Um, you, well, you have to take well, it. Like it's, it's a friendly amendment. So it's a friendly it's amendment. Adopted so is the main motion now. Oh, you did you want to just? Yes. I'll make uh, it, then that should be made as a formal amendment, and we should discuss it and vote on it. Okay. I thought it was. Isn't it, a, isn't it an amendment? It is if someone objects. And it's yes. seconded. I didn't say I wanted to object. I want to talk about this. We yeah. will. We will. This was just an amendment about the title. You want to talk about the title or the whole thing? Well, I, you know, I mean, I do want to talk about the whole thing, but the title is part of the whole okay. thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, okay. I think that's a step in the right direction. I think we're straying into areas. All right, Barry, why don't you make that as a formal amendment and okay. well, right. have someone okay. second it, and then we can discuss it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll second the formal Just amendment. Can make sure you read what I did and okay. see if yeah. you um, yeah. So make an amendment to uh, strike the title and replace it with a resolution in support of mm -hmm. health and safety regarding gas installations in the town of Reading. Now you, you can either take discussion right. only on that, or you can take it on the entire. Let, let's okay. let's focus on the on the title um, right. and have discussion on the title. Any discussion on the title? Yes, I John. think it's a step in the right direction um, because it's our business to fix potholes and look out for the safety of this town. I mean, among other things, mm -hmm. make sure that the parks work right and you know the traffic flows and all of that stuff. But you know, what's going on here is different than that. I mean, so the title somehow, I, I understand what you're trying to do, Barry, you're trying to bring it in mm -hmm. to a topic that is germane to our, to what we do. To what right. we, do. Yeah. Um, we are, however, I mean, one might question some of the other whereas is and be it resolved. I mean, I understand where you, you know, I do understand where you're trying to get, Barry. 
and I'm guessing that there's been several iterations and yeah. you and Dan have worked on. And philosophically, I mean, I just want to say this for the benefit of you guys. Um, uh, you guys are all active workers. And, you know, I'm probably the only guy in the room that has a withdrawal card from the United Steelworkers Union. <laughs> um, and I grew up with the shop steward that had 400 guys in the steel mill that uh, yeah. came looking for advice to him. So you got to understand where I'm coming from. John, you know, John, I, so the title. So this is germane because the title is the title. Okay. Well, However, when you look at the body of this thing, the title is, uh, you know, this amendment I'm actually in favor of. Okay. Okay. But I think that it is only a step. I think we've got to be really careful about where we stray. Okay, are you okay with the title? As Barry... Barry I'm okay with the amendment, yeah. Okay, so um, any further discussion on the amendment for the title? All in favor? Okay, so amended. Uh, now I'll open up discussion on the uh, rest of the document. Vanessa, I think you had asked. Thank you. Uh, so after... Uh, our town council had sent out that email to us uh, sometime last week, I think it was. Um, I took the liberty of, of gaining a little bit more information. Um, as far as the concern regarding whether or not we have the authority to do something like this, um, Cambridge has actually passed um, a resolution and they cited Massachusetts General Law 164, Section 75, which states municipal authorities, quote, may regulate, restrict, and control all acts and doings of a corporation which may in any manner affect the health, safety, convenience, or property of the inhabitants of their towns, end quote. Um, so there, I believe we're at upward of 18 towns and cities that have passed moratoriums, and many are already having a second meeting similar to ours here. Um, so as far as the resolution as it stands now, um, I would actually recommend um, changing it to incorporate some of the language that some of the other cities and towns have incorporated. Um, and Drakeit is actually taking an interesting approach, which is um, they have um, asked, they have said that they will stop future permits and future work from being done. However, they have invested their town administrator with the authority on one-off situations to approve work. Uh, for example, if there's a major development where gas lines are about to go in, in this case, our town manager would have the opportunity to override the moratorium on one-off requests. So that, to me, is a middle ground between a flat um, denial of permits for future gas work um, and this which frankly doesn't do anything um, to encourage the collaboration of National Grid. Okay. Um, I'm afraid I need a two minute break. I apologize to break in the middle of this discussion. Um, I think Vanessa, I, I wasn't aware of um, that law and um, so in the meantime I'll be right back and we can all think on that and how that may influence what we want to do. Anybody else? No? Okay.
Cambridge in passing their resolution cited Massachusetts General Law 164, Section 75, which states municipal authorities, quote, may regulate, restrict, and control all acts and doings of a corporation which may in any manner affect the health, safety, convenience, or property of the inhabitants of their towns, end quote. So, uh, and uh, the reason I read this is that um, in regards to town council's concerns about um, uh, a resolution or moratorium being difficult to defend, we have authority under state law um, to in fact do just this. Right. Um, and to date, at least 18 other cities and towns have passed, if not a moratorium, by, by name a resolution with the same intent. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I mean, so they define what they mean by local authorities. Are they talking about a legislative local authority, an executive local authority? Municipal authorities. Is that defined somewhere in the statute? Not to my knowledge. So then there are powers that we don't have, the town meeting has? Yeah. There, city and, and councils would have powers. City councils have powers we don't have. have. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. I don't know if that extends to select boards, but that's a question really for Ray. Yeah. Uh, following that, John, is there a, I mean, I wish Ray was here, really, frankly, but um, it strikes me that, I mean, do we, what authority do we have over permits? None that I'm aware of in the five years that I've been a select. It's all spelled out. Right. So, I mean, it's, our authority over permits is very limited. I mean, we work over with liquor licenses, we work on, you know, a lot of things, but... I never recall a, a permit request in front of us. Uh, I mean, I think this speaks to the broader safety that we are expected to bring to residents. I mean, we've seen in the packet they provide numerous examples. Um, so, in my mind, this we have two choices, which is to do nothing um, or uh, to look out for the best interests and the safety of the town during these types of projects um, by passing a resolution stopping this kind of work. Um, you know, I know that um, locally that these, um, uh, the employees that are currently on lockout um, have filed 30 complaints um, in 15 towns in the past nine weeks. And that to me is concerning that there is work kind going on. Um, about inadequate safety measures being taken with gas line work. So, uh, as as someone who feels responsible for the safety of the town and the work being done here, it seems, frankly, a little negligent for us not to do anything. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to comment. I, th I think um, we're all concerned about the safety issue, and that was paramount in in, in Dan and I discussed this, that was the, the main topic, and uh, the title <laughs> was misleading. Thank you for picking that up, Barry. I, I think the question that I see before us is we, we have advice from town council that it would be hard to defend uh, a moratorium or a or, or a requirement that we place on uh, permits. The unfortunately, this is what we have here. We're trying to exert maybe what you might call moral authority, but it has no legal implications. So. I think we, we need to decide as a board what measures we, we want to take and what risk, what kind of risk we would be taking um, if we put restrictions on the permit or put some sort of moratorium. Um, and to me, I think that risk would be, it could be challenged by National Grid and then we would have to retract it. Um, would you like to offer that as an amendment? Do you have an alternate uh, motion um, prepared? Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion. Is it a motion? Yeah, to yeah. the amending. Motion uh, to amend the, up there. Yep. We're calling a resolution, yep. uh, to include the language 
Uh, be it resolved, the town of Reading. Vanessa, whereabouts? Where uh, are you talking? It's the one that's. No, where in the dock? You have to guess. Oh. Which, which, which okay. would it be if there's four resolves you want yeah. to have? Uh, which paragraph? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven. So I would uh, move that we remove the third be it resolved that the Reading Select Board strongly urges National Grid to disclose in writing to okay. affected property owners, etc. Oh, okay. And replace that no, with. That's the one above it. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah. Strike that. Yeah. That the town of Reading provide. Uh, heightened scrutiny, safety inspections, and monitoring on all national grid work being done during the lockout of national grid's contract workers, and that no new permits for gas construction projects shall be issued uh, by this select board. Sorry. As I mentioned, Drakeit does have come from an additional language granting yeah, their town administrator uh, additional authority. We could add something to that effect as well. Um, I'm sorry, could you read it again? The town of Reddit. Here. Oh, yeah, even better. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Uh, this last one. This one provides. Provides. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bill, I'm sorry. I, I have to keep my okay. promise of no, no public comment. Um, so, Vanessa, I, I will point out uh, um, I'm, in, I, I'm favorably inclined to your amendment except that um, as far as Reading providing heightened scrutiny, safety inspections, et cetera, I did ask that about Bob. Uh, we did ask that of Bob, and unfortunately Bob can't listen because he's typing. No, I'm listening. Um, but but he, he was pretty clear that we do not have that kind of expertise. Okay. So, um, I, friendly amendment. I would make a friendly, a friendly amendment if, if people are allowed, or we can have well, discussion. Well, this will need to be brought as an amendment. Just wait until yeah. I finish. Because you have me typing yes, words that don't you. exist now. Yeah. Friendly amendment is usually for like innocuous change. This is a substantive This is change. a substantive, yes. I, I this is a thing. point of order. Example you've provided, for instance, it's Melrose. Yeah. Uh, no new um, permit. No new projects. No new uh, permits for these will be issued by the Board of Aldermen, which obviously you don't do. Right? Yes. No. It would be. It would be by the town of Reading. By, by the town. Of Reading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll need to get a second on that. For yeah. To get to proceed. Good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Second. Oops. I'll second it. Um, discussion. Back to us. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, back to your, you, the point you just brought up. Yeah. Is um, do we even have the capacity to to do this? Um, you know, I mean, we have Bob. How many gas inspectors well, do we it's have? Not, it's not the capacity. We don't have the expertise. Yeah. We are. I'll certainly consider um, removing the heightened. Heightened scrutiny and safety inspections and monitoring, and simply say, uh, the town of Reading uh, will provide no new permits for. So remove the whole um, scrutiny part. section. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> no new permits for. Show grant. No new permits. Well, gas construction projects. Yeah. For gas construction, no new permits for oh, gas construction that, uh, projects. Oh, so, so, uh, yeah, so period. Take out that shall be issued. Yeah. There you go. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yep. Is that right? 
Yes. Oh. And remove the and after. That goes to the next paragraph, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. I stand corrected. So I'll s second the amendment to the amendment and um, any discussion on the amendment to the amendment. Yes. John. So by what authority, I mean, we're, we're moving from resolution to, you know, um, a withholding of permits. And I want to know by what authority the Board of Selectmen can do that. I yeah. don't, I mean, I thought... John, so we're discussing right now. We'll get to that. I, I'm just talking about that. the amendment. Yeah. No, no, the Board amendment. To, no, he's on. Yeah, he's on point. So, he's on point. oh, okay. I thought we were talking about the amendment to the amendment, which was to strike the uh, expertise bit. With all due respect, no, no. I, I am on. I am on task. Yeah, that was a friendly amendment. Oh, that was a friendly. You're amendment. done with that. Just the point of order. Now we got it out of the way. All oh, right. All right. It seems substantial to me, so I. I, I one. Chairman's right trying to be very. Precise, yeah. To which I credit. Okay, so so we ex is, is there any objections to that amendment removing no. that language? No. No. Okay. You and she had agreed. Hearing that, yeah. John. Um, yes, just, I so object to removing the language, but you know, um, one person removing. I'm sorry, you you object to removing the language. You know, we're, we're going to follow the bouncing ball. Am I objecting John, to the removal, John, or am I? Are you objecting to the removal of the language regarding the expertise? that we cannot provide. I think he wants to kind of talk about the whole notion of... Right. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to make... The, just proceed with your vote. I, I'll, you know, I'll be quiet. I'm not asking you to be quiet, but, uh, John. I, I'm simply... Well, you are in a de facto way, but that's right. beside the point. John, <laughs> that's out of order. I, All right, I, I, let's stop this. I, so let's discuss the amendment as it, as it reads. Any com comments, please? I think that's what you wanted to talk about. Okay, John. Yes. Go ahead. By what authority are we doing this? How do we act? How can we do what that says? By what authority invested in this board can we do that? That is the amendment. Yeah, that is the amendment. And, and Vanessa gave an example of state law. I think we... we but that was unclear about whether or not that where it's a municipal authority. Mm -hmm. you know, most of the, the municipalities that dealt with that were cities where it's the alderman or the city council that issues the permits. We, we are removed from that. So then the question is, does that mass general law pertain to a town? Right. And, and so that's the part that we may not have the authority to do so. And, but I, I kind of bringing it back around, mm. I mean, wasn't Ray's whole point when you guys were kind of working on this is that um, that we wouldn't, that his opinion was that we didn't have the legal authority mm -hmm. to do so, but, you know. It was questionable at best. Question, okay. So, yeah. And was, we didn't have the authority to ban some permits at all. Yeah. So the street opening permits, site plan approvals, well, that's CPDC. Building permits, plumbing permits. Right. Not our, not our sphere. Yeah. The only thing we really operate or have dominion over is grants of location. That's when uh, coal and gas permits are issued. Uh, so, is the main concern the authority portion? So, if we could, con if Ray could confirm whether or not we did in fact have the authority, it's a yeah. legitimate question. Mm -hmm. If it is the case that we do have the authority mm -hmm. to pass this and prevent the uh, granting of permits for this type of work, in that scenario, would there be objections to the resolution as it stands now? I think he answered the question. Can I, can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah, sure. And I don't know if anyone has an answer for this, but how would you define a gas construction project? What does that mean? Does that mean any work on natural gas pipelines in the town? Or does it mean a project, to me, implies a big thing? I see. And what is it? Non-emergency work. So any non-emergency. So it could be someone wanted to hook up, put gas to their house. That's, right. That's my question is what is well, the... Versus Lincoln Street. Put gas lines under Main Street in preparation for paving. Yeah. 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 Non, yeah. All non-emergency work is what all of the other cities and towns have been okay. emphasizing. So here's here's what I'm thinking. I, I'm... 
we need, as John mentioned, we need we have some outstanding executive minutes that we need to approve soon. That responsibility falls. I, I know this is slightly off topic, but I'll bring it around. Um, that needs to be done soon. That's the open meeting law clearly points the finger at the chair mm -hmm. to get that out in a timely fashion. Those minutes. <coughs> so, um, would it be possible for us to have a meeting? before September 11th, where we only discuss two things. We go in an executive session to approve the minutes for that meeting, um, and we have Ray research this further, um, and then decide it with a little more confidence at that time. Is there any the, to do this thing, this this resolution in the executive session? No, 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 no. The exec, the oh, executive so the, meeting. Uh, oh, 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 they, they need they need to be approved and, right. and and sent out, or the state will will. You you only have one option if you're sticking to Tuesday, because the fourth is the primary. Right. Can't meet that day legally. Uh, that's be a week from tonight. Right. So that, I mean, if you want to put all this off to the eleventh. That's that's fine. I mean, I I. How full is the eleventh? Um. Up to Andy. Yeah, uh, I mean, not specific. I mean, Jedi it's going to depend on some of our goals. So, it, yeah. what? Because I think we're going to have a couple of deferred items. We're getting pretty late for the yeah. last three here. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. just FYI, I, mean, I got to take a kid to school. Yeah, for I, I hear it. I hear it. Um, is the board willing? Uh, I can meet next Tuesday. Um, is is? Uh, but but I don't want to do this unless the entire board can. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be around. Okay then. Can you call in? Um, I don't know where I'm going to be. Are you somewhere to? between North Carolina? Yeah, it's an executive uh, session you're talking about. It's pretty important to have present. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a Tuesday. So. I, I think we can probably wait till the 11th. Okay. That's Just good. Duly noted that you're. Is that the feeling of the board that we. Do you want to make a motion to table this? Can, can, I, yeah. can yes. I make a clarification? Yeah. If we ask Ray to do additional research on this, mm -hmm. He comes back saying, yes, you do have the authority under the state regulation that I listed or another. Um, are there any other concerns or changes that anyone would want to make to the resolution as it stands now? And I ask this because mm -hmm. we should probably figure that out in case there's other questions we want Ray to look into. I, I would have no. That's very it's good that we do that. Yeah, it is. Um, I, know, I mean, the, the whole. I want to know if I have the authority to do this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, since you've raised some valid points, we need, really need to explore this. I yeah. think. I, I tend to agree, John. Yeah. Um, I only have one question. Mm. Um, beyond the one that I've been asking all along about the authority that Barry's just reiterated. Right. Um, we're talking about. Have we invited at any time National Grid to come and convince us that they're operating a safe enterprise in the town of Reading? I mean, I, I hear what the guys are saying, and I'm not questioning their. Right. I'm not questioning you guys. Yeah. Okay, you get it. You know, you kind of. Uh, uh, no, I'm not really. We're, we're, yeah, they won't. They won't show up. Uh, I'm, no one. Has anyone asked? No. I believe you're probably right, but have we invited them? No. We have gotten information from them through Bob. Haven't you spoken with them? Many? I've never invited them to come to a meeting. You no. told me you were inviting them to the last meeting. No. Get hold of them. Not, not yeah, to the okay. Well, they didn't. We had, a, we, had a, we had a brand okay. in here, guys. I, I, so. I hear four members of the board, yeah, at yeah. least. Yeah. Okay. Wanting to postpone this till September 11th. It sounds like someone should make a motion to table so we can pick it up right at the point of that. Motion to table. Uh, uh, second. second. That's not debatable. Okay. That's okay. All right. <laughs> so we will table this to the 11th. All right. Oh, well, we have to vote on it. Yeah, the best you vote. All the vote. Okay. Um, all in favor of tabling this to the 7th? 11th. 11th. Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay, now I think we're going back to item uh, B, so and, now we're, B and C. Now yeah. we're back to, um, can you, Bob, can you I just want to make sure to save that last document. Yep. Oh, okay. That's important. Just, just keep going. Okay. okay. Yeah, talk. <laughs> I'll catch up. Uh, oh, you want me to wait? 
Um, so what's what's what he, he said? Keep talking, but oh. we, we're not going to make any important decisions mm -hmm. when he's here. I, we just got to remind me what page this is on I'll, the packet. I'll bring it up behind us. It's five B. Item five B. Whatever that is. Five B. Yeah, on the lower right corner. Oh, I happen to have it right here. Thirty page thirty one in the PDF. Doing the town. Oh, page thirty one in the PDF. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go over those ten articles uh, yep. in the draft form. Uh, one of you has already covered. I think it was you, Andy. Yep. The um, you know, it's where the chair of the bylaw committee has resigned. Mm -hmm. um, he is up unable to convene a meeting of the bylaw committee oh. all summer. Oh, yeah, we don't know when they will next meet. So just to be clear, any actions they it's may have taken at November town meeting cannot happen. And they'll be scheduled in April. They they have um, they're trying to schedule a meeting. Uh, I think for next week. In next week. Yeah. So okay. wait a minute. Wouldn't they have? You say they missed the opportunity. They've long since missed the deadline. I gave them oh, town council to work. review anything that they've done. That's why there's nothing controversial here. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. I noticed that. So um, I don't think I need to go over the report. You can see what I believe yeah. will happen. Uh, instructional motions, we never know. Capital, there will be uh, discussion. Um, schools and facilities, especially in myself and DPW, have a lot of discussions. Okay. There will be budget amendments, not significant ones. I, I don't know of any prior year's bills, but it's always a good idea to believe that as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. um, we will have surplus. Again, it's not a big thing. Um, I've asked the town accountant. She supplied some prior debt authorizations that we don't need anymore, so it's a good house clue. What page is that on the PDF, Bob? Uh, 31. 31. 31. Uh, we'll rescind some prior debt authorizations. Um, we'll ask for a new de debt authorization for uh, sewer inflow infiltration. Mm -hmm. um, as you have an agenda item tonight um, to follow, to finish this, the sale of uh, property, civil so tax title, Reading and Wakefield, is ultimately a town meeting decision. And the last one is a placeholder. I'll flesh that out. Our conservation agent had a discussion um, with the owner of some interesting property in Timbernex Swamp. Is that, is that of gunshot fame? Uh, it could be. Because and um, I have not had a chance to talk to the fellow, but uh, Chuck had a really nice conversation. Alleged gunshot. And he's a very willing seller. As he'll just leave it at that. So that would be ultimately a town meeting decision. Timbernex Swamp is. Is that the swamp up off? No, Charles. Charles, Charles, Charles Timberneck. Charles. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, that's that land lot. Yeah. There's one yeah. piece of land that's not ten acres surrounded by guns or the Reading Open Land Trust. Yeah. yeah, this would fill that. Okay, good. Right. That was and that's it. It's a pretty simple warrant. That's a change because yeah. several years ago they yeah. were not interested in at change. all in selling it. Yep. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Um, so, I'll open discussions as Vanessa comes back um, on the page 31 that I cannot find now. Um, it, would anyone like to um, make a motion? Do we make a motion? No, no, That's just a no, preview. No need. It's just a preview. No, not yet. Okay. We're, not, we're not closing okay. anymore for some time. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bob. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, C. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. It's yes, C, C, C. Authorize sale. Okay. There's a motion in your packet. I wanted to remind you of some pictures. This, the board has seen this previously. Um, this was the jointly owned uh, Reading Wakefield property. Mm -hmm. I asked DPW to give it a little bit of a trim. Oops. And they didn't turn it into a moratorium. <laughs> it's, that's interesting. They turned it into this. Wow. So this is what the property actually looks like. You can barely tell there was a house there before. So the front door is in Reading, the back door is in Wakefield. Um, <laughs> most of it's in Wakefield. Most right? of it's in Wakefield. Yeah. We own from the street to about here. Oh, okay. And then straight across. So you can't get to the house except through Reading. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, the town administrator and I, a year or two ago, talked about this, that we both had it in tax title. What's the point? Um, let's try to sell it. So they've gone through a, a bid process. Um, the Wakefield and the Reading processes are different. So in Reading, the final two steps are for the board to approve it and then for town meeting to approve it. All. Uh -huh. I thought we did approve it. Um, you didn't did approve something? the terms that you're going to read in the motion specifically because uh, okay. there were none. You, appro you approved the concept. You like the idea. Got it. Got it. Um, Wakefield went through a different process, so we kind of learned along the way. Um, 
the, we did it on square footage in terms of the purchase price. It's not going to be a lot of money, but it's really just let's put a productive piece of property back into use. Yep. No, it's that simple. And do it should be a motion. Are, do a copy will of the we motion continue to have a current. joint ownership of this thing? No. Uh, well, yes, we will continue to own the land as we do. We will own the front. It will have an assessed value. It's a small number. They will own the back. It's a bigger assessed value. That won't change. To is change the practical Bob, or is no, of course it's not. But to change the boundaries uh, requires, like, I don't know, constitutional convention or something. <laughs> right, you gotta, you gotta you gotta change the boundaries. That's why I just wondered if we could yeah. sell you our to, tax interest to, get a to Wakefield. You'd have to survey it. it. It's <laughs> way too large for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. And interestingly, even though the house is in Wakefield, its mailing address is in Reading because we have the street. So, 65 long. So, you know, it would have been nice to draw the roads where the boundaries were, but that's mm. not how things work. Then I'm, I'm confused. We're not selling the property, but oh, we, we hope to, yes. We hope to, yes. Because right, if they're both in tax title, it'll, it'll right. work. It's well, it'll it says go. that there's a buyer. There is a buyer with we'll we'll venture and RP legally. Yep. Yep. Uh, Wakefield has <laughs> done all their legal work. We have to these two last steps. And they're willing to wait till the end of November. Um, that was a condition of the sale proposed okay. to the buyer and accepted. It's continuing. Because they probably have to wait for two weeks after there's a possibility of overturning the vote by referendum. Right. You got a lot of free landscaping out of the town. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vanessa, can you read this? I, uh, I will read it. I will uh, motion. If we can put it up, I'll move for it to dispense <laughs> at some point. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, it's in your packet. Can you tell me the page? It's page 33. Got it, Vanessa? Yeah, that's what I have here. Okay, go ahead and then. So I have to read. Okay, sure, that's fine. Uh, I move that the select board vote to it's approve. Packing on the desk. Sorry. Uh, move the select board vote to approve the sale of the property located on Brook Street, shown as lot 122 on assessor's map 8, and described in a deed recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds. I'll move to dispense with the further reading of the motion, given that it's in front of all five of us. I'll call a second. Thank you for sparing me. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> Everybody all in favor of dispensing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So, um, any discussion? Um, the, I mean, the only the only question I had, and, and, and hopefully, um, I'm assuming that the Brook Street neighbors are probably just thrilled to just have somebody buy this. I haven't asked, but I, I can't yeah, imagine sure why they wouldn't force it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, yeah. and right. behind you now, or behind me now, is the mm -hmm. agreement that Wakefield and Reddick yeah. struck, if you will, how to share the proceeds. Okay. Yeah, but they're going to knock it down and build something. Probably. Whatever, it's good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. All, yeah. Um, any more, any further discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Okay. All right. That, 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 that business is done. Once you close the warrant, that will go to town meeting. Okay. So, uh, I, I it really, it's 10-10. It's it's no. um, I understand that, I understand you got to take a kid's, kid to college, but I would like to spend maybe 10 minutes on select board goals. I'd really like to nail down one or two that we can start working on, um, for, for on you know, obviously on behalf of the town. And so far, these are the, um, these are the goals as I, I have them. Um, I sent, I sent as I promised, I sent these to John, so he has them as well. I have a few other ideas if we want to consider them, but I, I would encourage the board to uh, pick pick a, uh, one or two of these so we can have. Is this in the? Where, where are we? In the I, I didn't see any where material. Are we in the uh, G select board goals. Do you have a page? I don't have PDF? a page though. You don't have a page. So was okay. this was this in there? There's no there. material in there. So so I will read what I sent John, which was a summary mm -hmm. of the ideas we threw up on the on the board. Um, one was finish updating our policies. Yep. Um, so far, I have it that Vanessa and Barry are working on the communication piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, two. and Dan and I are going to be working on all of two. All of two. Um, the other, the other one was considering reconstituting the Economic Development Committee, except in a, in a, in, under a different name and a revised mission that reflects a focus on downtown. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, also uh, Barry proposed uh, some team, some sort of team building exercise to get the board to work better together and uh, the, the other one was review the master plan so uh, all right I, all, are we all in favor of at least the goal of finishing updating our policies? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So all in, all in favor of that goal, that would be goal number one. Yeah. Um, we have a sense of the board. Yeah. I think yeah. Are we limiting okay. it to just the ones that you are all working on now? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I had a few others that I yeah, thought about after. We've talked yeah. about this now for a couple of years, yeah. getting these things fixed. All right. So, need to be fixed. so we, Dan and I, and, and, yeah. and yeah. We, we are dedicated yeah. to revising Section 2 as soon as possible. Um, Re Let's hear the re Barry. You have some ideas, some more ideas, and John, I just, you might have I just, some. I just, I just had some. Let's I get mean, the other ideas you know, down. The, the team we... building exercise. Yep. I, I think is something that we should move forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple in here that two or three that that I think we might have talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, I really want. I, I think we should really move forward on constituting the housing trust. Um, and, and sort of moving away from sort of that joint board of selectmen, um, I'm sorry, select board um, housing authority on how we disperse it. But we had talked about that actually even in the meeting publicly when the housing uh -huh. authority was here. And this was actually in the housing production mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Um, and it was actually, it was recommended there about really just sort of formulating a housing trust that so would have a group, a separate group mm -hmm. that we appoint that's responsible um, for um, sort of creating the fund for affordable housing and really being responsible for thinking about that. And that would include things like making sure the deed restrictions that we have on the, on the existing houses stay in place. Yeah. And that, you know, we sort of entail that to a separate um, um, board, um, yeah. the housing trust. So. Um, from what I understand, that's been recommended before. We could possibly even get that in November town meeting, maybe. No. So maybe April. It's got to be knee high by the Fourth of July. Right. right. <laughs> April. Right. So, so the housing, you know, creating the housing trust, which is something that has been in our um, recommendations for a while. Um, okay. I think. Yeah, okay. So just bring. Go ahead. All right. Um, I think we have to finally come up, um, uh, start thinking about a disposition, of <coughs> open road. Yeah. Um, I, I just, it's, it's uh, you know, it's in our, it, we've had it now. It's been sent back to us. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and I'm not saying I have the answer. I'm saying just come up with the, the answer. To yeah. come up with the answer. Uh, yeah. uh, I agree with that. I um, mean, there, there's an answer. I'm not sure what it is yet, but, you know, yeah. getting to something on that instead of languishing is probably a good mm -hmm. idea. I um, agree with that. And, uh, you know, both yeah, of those come up with the process. Uh, I, I uh, feel strongly about that, too. Another one is, uh, and this is in support of a work that's all, a, a lot of work that's been going on for now for a couple of years with many, many organizations in town, which is looking toward, to create a cultural district in Reading. Um, and you know, there's some there's groups that are coming together. They have some thoughts, but um, I think that really kind of coalesces with our economic development uh, initiatives. In that, you know, creating a cultural district within that downtown um, really, I think, just sort of puts a spearhead to, to a lot of things that we're doing. And it's not like we're it's not like we're starting from scratch. There's a lot of good work being done. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to pay homage to those folks. And have us sort of take that on and work with them a little bit more carefully and figure out what that. Don't they kind of have a name already? Or it's Arts Reading. Yeah, there is a group. Yeah. Arts Reading. But, but yeah. I think one of their initiatives, and I know they're doing something in the fall to kind of kick off, mm -hmm. is to create a cultural district that that has boundaries, and then you know, and and, and that could be a separate and nonprofit that comes off of that. They could do some fundraising. They could do, you know, look at buying a building, for doing some performing art. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can come out of it and it's going that way. It hasn't really percolated to our level yet, I don't think, other than just sort of even liaison into it. You know, Matt's working on it, but... Um, Andy, if I might. Yes, please. I believe it's in October, Matt's coming in to give you a preview of the following event, which you've mentioned, which is a week or two after he comes in and sees the book. So if you can, okay. I'll, pr I'll let him know about this. But I think that that's something to kind of... You know, percolate to the top. Okay, thanks. Barry, is that it? 
Yeah. There's more, but you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. if you make too many of these well, things, I, then I understand. Yeah. Well, we'll have choices. I think John had his hands right. Well, what I, I wanted to comment on, you know, first of all, I think we got to manage the number. Right. Yes. Because, and I think they ought to be something that we can realistically make either progress or completion on by the time that we kind of, you know, run through our next year, which yes. is, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's election to election. Yes. I agree. But so, this is sort of the brainstorming phase where we don't want to down select yet, and then we should move. Yeah, call, I, mean, call the I happen down. to think that each one of those things that you brought up, Barry, are worthwhile. Are mm -hmm. worthwhile, you know, practical, yeah. and actually likely attainable in the window of time that we have. Um, you know, obviously the, the the other one that we've talked about here with the the policies, right? right. We got to get that right. right. Absolutely. Right. And we've been dragging our feet really for a long time, not this board for a long time, but other boards yeah. in the past. So we, we have made some progress. There's been progress each year, yeah. but it, yeah. It's time to nail we that just, off. It's not rocket science. We can no. fix it. Yep. You know. Yep. So, but now what you start to talk about is, I think, a handful. I, I totally That's agree. It, you yep. know, and I happen to really think that those ones that Barry brought up are a nice match to the policy. So, so I, I, I you know, it, it, to reiterate what Dan said, the idea the idea here is to cast a broad net and then narrow it down. We, we, we obviously we can't overwhelm ourselves with yeah. goals. Um, John, did you have any goals? I, you know, uh, I mean, I, I have like some longer see? term interests that we couldn't get done in a year that, yeah. I, that I think we should start to think about. I do think we need to begin thinking about the utilization of our recreation space, yeah. you know, and, and what is possible. Right. Because I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing rumblings that the child population may be growing again. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of really using our space. Yeah. You know, uh, I know the Birch Meadow plan I think is reconstituted. I'm glad yeah. it needs to. We need to think about the things that can help us expand recreation. Yep. So I'm very interested in a hard look at not the recreation committee, but a hard look at the recreation space and what could we do. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we've got a few places floating around here. I mean, out behind the ice arena is a place that mm -hmm. there's a baseball field that's heavily used, but the opportunity and a for soccer field. Yes, but it's but it's used as a soccer field in the fall. It's used as a baseball yeah. field, you know, in the spring and the summer. I think that there's actually adequate space out there to be thinking about something all Reading residents can use, from hiking and biking trails to yeah. okay. a lot of other things. Yeah. So my Potential point is, public private partnership yes, there, or uh, buying some So cars. my one yeah. goal that I would like us to start looking at, although mm -hmm. probably can't complete, would be a longer look at the recreational space Got it. and try to think about what alternatives we have. I think that's good. Vanessa. So John, you actually bring up an interesting point because I think you're absolutely right. We really have a year to get some of these things done. And I think there are certain items on that list, like the policy that can certainly be done in that time. Yep. But your point about our recreational facilities or fields um, brings up an excellent point that we do have other initiatives that are multi-year in nature be just because of their scope. Um, so I would suggest as we talk about our goals that we have, I agree in limiting them to a handful, because that's the only thing that's yeah. manageable, um, but having short-term attainable goals um, or things that we can make significant progress on, as Joe said, as well as having some longer-term goals. Recreation could be one of them um, added to the list for brainstorming. I would add um, collaborating with RMLD. They've been um, very proactive in, in improving their efficiencies and streamlining a lot of their work. I would be very interested in having them partner with us to see what we can learn from them, what they're thinking. The um, electric vehicle charging stations is just one idea, um, but they may have others where the town could benefit as a whole, but that would be a much longer term project. Right. 
well, great. And something like that, aren't we? Kind of, aren't they? Um, I mean, it's in our best interest that we help them. You know, get different verticals, right? Mm -hmm. Because we get a big benefit from them every year. Um, but um, wasn't there already kind of some discussion? Um, with um, their study. What are they doing a study? Uh, well, they're doing a, a financial oh, yeah. study, yes, um, on their uh, overall um, revenue. revenue and expenses, yeah. but if that's separate from what their future goals are to build revenue. There's, it's more of a... Are they talking about taking on other verticals? Or, you know? yeah, they are. I mean, they've been talking about internet service. We, we've been talking about them having internet service. I don't know what it is. I, I don't see, yeah, I mean, that, it's something that has been mentioned, Dan. I don't know if that's necessarily mm -hmm. on the horizon at yeah. the moment. I mean, yeah, that's talking about a long-term project. Definitely so. pros and cons, yeah. you can yeah. argue either way there for them. But they yeah. may have other ideas that we're not aware of, so. I see that in terms of economic development. Great. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So we have um, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just tick them off really quick. And if, if we could pick three tonight, is that reasonable? Because we're running late. Yes, Bob? I have a goal for you. <laughs> oh, oh, you're not allowed to say this. this. Is nice. <laughs> sure, right, um, there has to be a community uh, discussion of some longer term building projects. Mm -hmm. And you are part of that discussion community. Um, elementary school space is one, DPW garage is another, and community center is another. So there has to be some sense at a financial form of a discussion to agree to some set of priorities and time frames. Well, doesn't that get into the purview of the Permanent Building Committee? Uh, it, it, it does, and it's, that's why it's, it's a sure. community yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, those three projects are not funded within the right. current capital plan. And there are others yes. that are not funded, and I'm just saying the board has absolutely strong interest in many of these issues. All right. All right. Yeah. I, and some know. of those, for example, could the shorter term goal, yeah, like Oakland, Oakland Road, for right. example, yeah. might play, could. I, could possibly play right into that. Right. So. And I don't mean you should be stepping on the school committee's toes. It's just a community discussion. Well, that's what the financial forums are usually for, right? right. To kind of right. put these together. Right. Um, I, I agree. I agree, Bob. Okay, so that gives us the happy number of 13. I'll just tick them off. And um, if we can, if three rise to the top, we're not forgetting about the rest of them, but um, we can start working. And I. And if we could come up with a deadline, uh, I work better with the deadline. I don't know about you, all of you. Andy, before we go into that, um, are we planning on talking about the stakeholders meeting on Yes, on that's what I'm trying to. As well as the select board policy and communication, or are we postponing that? I don't know if you're going to have time to do the communication. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, I was going to say, can we. Okay. Can, would the board be amenable to tabling, identifying the goals until our next That's That's fine. And fine. Then moving on to I, the I was prepared to say go wide on the last three tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You would send me the list you have I and then prepare it for a future meeting. That sounds great. Or actually, you know, if, since you can communicate with all of us, you can send, send it to us on. and then we can kind of put yeah, do that. priorities you in there. And, and yeah. at least now you'll have everybody's aggregation. Yeah, no, I will. About, yeah. Bob, no, that's what I was saying. It's about yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. good. Do Just be clear. I will do that. Um, yeah. Everyone in agreement. Um, the, the, I wanted to get people's uh, quick input next on, on September 11th, we're going to have a stakeholders meeting on the anti-Semitic vandalism that we made a statement about um, and taking some action on. I expect HRAC to take the lead in that. In our meeting? That, that will be part of our meeting. Oh, right. And and my, my thought was to hear from key parts of the community um, to get some ideas for actions that we can take. I know ATRAC is already starting to work on this, but I wanted to open it up to a wider community discussion. Um, any thoughts on that? Is this just ATRAC? Is Red involved? I, I invited Red. Yeah. I asked the uh, police chief. He was <laughs> very enthusiastic about coming. Of course, yeah. that's th that is. Um, it depends on. How about our brother and sister on the school committee? Yes. It's happening on yes. the properties. Like yes, I have. Have we invited the school committee? Yeah, um, I, I've talked, I mean, I've, I've sent out an invitation I haven't heard back, um, but um, 
I th it'd be great if we could get them. To, we can't force people to come, but are there? So those are the groups that I've reached out to. Any other groups that you can think of? The clergy. Yeah, the clergy. The clergy association. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Andy, can I just add? So yeah. so the eleventh. The, the, the agenda title is called stakeholders meeting on anti on the right so is it is it and and we and we're we're hosting it we're not running it we're, I assume we're hosting well, it. well yeah we're hosting it but no, we are running meeting. it yeah. I mean it's our part of our meeting but we want it yeah. so is it Probably. kind of I mean do you sort of have a vision for sort of um, what you what you want to come out of it at the end is it, it I guess the last thing in the world I'd want to see is you know the town should have done this or the town should have done it's that. It's not looking in hindsight. Okay, so I mean, it, it, so is there a structure in your mind yet about kind of um, I mean, you said a track is going to kind of run it a little bit. I mean, is it just more of a what are some ideas that we can do? What are some uh, I mean. Yes, I was, help me think about the, the 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 concept would be that each of these groups present their ideas for us to consider, mm -hmm. and then I think the appropriate thing to do is when we consider the ideas and which ones we would like to implement, that HRAC, um, not to shove all the work on them, but they are technically. They're the only ones we appoint out the, right. of all those people. Exactly. We can't tell Red what to do. We can't tell the Red. But I want to hear their ideas in some sort of, you know, some brief presentations. Um, and also the police chiefs. He, he was actually excited to have a conversation with these groups because, mm -hmm. you know, the police have limitations too uh, in this area. And, and he thought it would be a good opportunity for a conversation. So are there any other groups that you guys can think of, uh, or I'm sorry, you folks can think of, uh, that we should invite to this? I would, um, it would ultimately be up to the school committee, but I think the principal, principals of the high school mm -hmm. and middle school, yeah. if the school committee would like to extend that invitation, yeah. I, you know, I think mm -hmm. they would be school resource officer, again, all this under the purview of the school committee generally. Anyone else that they might consider as appropriate people on the ground at schools? The, you said the principal or the superintendent? The principals, oh, the principals of, of the middle of schools, schools and yeah. the high school as well as the school resource officer. I mean, do they know about that? Have, we, have you? I, 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 I've, I've let them know and I will uh, remind them. Okay, good. I will um, reach out uh, on that. And then, again, my hope is to have some brief presentations by all of them, ideas, um, so that we can take some sort of action through it. I think they may, they may be soliciting ideas from us, too. Sure. I, mean, I, don't I hope we, we have some ideas, too. You know. I think it would be nice if it was an open, open conversation, not necessarily structured. Now this room makes that hard. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I know we're kind mm. of back here. Yeah. So, so I mean, do, do you want to have a free flowing discussion on this, or do you want to have it organized into presentations, and then? Um, well, what's the expectations discuss? of the folks you've already talked to? I mean, what are they expecting to come out of this? They are expecting. I've asked for their input on ideas, on actions that we can take. Then it's got to be just a free flow of ideas. You know, it's just got to be, let it flow, let it, let you can it ride. You set that expectation. OK, yeah. all right. I mean, some of it may be you know, yeah. ready to write. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that would be good. Just if I might. Yes. Um, I've talked to the superintendent and the police chief. The three of us are happy to come. I've not Excellent. asked about the school committee or other employees. Mm -hmm. I, I will. I'll, I'll see them tomorrow or the next day. I forget. Okay. Um, when you say actions we can take, I think it's really important that you understand you are the select board. You are not the school committee. That's right. And the uh, meeting is very different with and without them. Abs absolutely. I'll, I'll encourage us. They're, they're very, very important stakeholders. Yeah, I just I, remembered I'm at a school committee meeting tomorrow. 
about 7 a.m. I'll pass this request right. along. Uh, I thank you. Yep. And um, the meeting at 7 in the morning? Executive session. I'm very aware of, oh boy. of the of the, yeah. the, the boundaries. Yeah, okay. So in, in one way, I was reluctant to ask them to come because I didn't want to appear like we we're. Oh, but but I think it's good that they they be okay. part of the conversation. They have a big piece of skin in the game. They really do. They really do. Um, okay. Um, Just five minutes left. I think we're going to defer one four. Um, how long is your one four? We we don't have any material on it, so it's really what can we talk about? Nothing in the back. Let's, yeah. let's a, table it. We were okay. gonna, yeah, we were just going to go over right, some ideas, but uh, yeah, which we've talked play. about. And yeah. It's, yeah. Um, let's, yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. Um, we'll would two someone minutes. like to mm -hmm. make two minutes? Two, two metro. All right. Do it. All right. You want to try? It's up to you. Here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really would away. like I, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. I know you didn't need to go, Barry. No, but, yeah. I just, because I think. I mean, uh, Vanessa and I met for like an hour and a half, and we yeah. we kicked around some uh, some really good ideas. And I I just I want to sort of honor that work and do it the right way, and not okay. just kind of just go uh, through it. Uh, I, I, I we're all just tired, and I, I respect that. I mean, yeah. unless yeah. remember we used to go to eleven. Yeah, I know, but I'm, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, can you give right. us at least an outline of the material you talked about for that? Yes, that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm ready to go. All right. All right. All right. Agree to table. Yes. Yes. Um, minutes. Yeah. The minutes. Uh, I have uh, any comments on the minutes. Yeah. Make a motion. <laughs> Can I make a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the select board of July thirty first, two thousand eighteen. Second. I have one comment on page three. Oh, wait, what's the? Where is it? It's uh, on the PDF. Yeah, it's eighty one. Paper. Starting six A one. Page three under public comment. Uh, Angela Binden noted her concerns that a letter was written to the select board by the recreation committee. Okay. The context of that was clear. That's all I have. I had two minor edits. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. You're just adding the terms uh, by, by the recreation committee yeah. after yeah, select board. Yeah. Um, page three hundred six A three. Yeah. On page six A two. Uh, under the open meeting law complaint. Um, one two. Technically, it's the third line down. Um, Miss Elrod over the statement she made. I would change that to read the statement mentioned in the June 19, 2018 minutes and replace uh, during the violation. Mentioned during, sorry, what was uh, So, read the statement mentioned in the June 19, oh, yeah. 2018 yeah. minutes. That's fine. Uh, and the only other one I have is uh, the comments and for, that should be under public comment. Uh, Hatch and Sylvia and um, Karas should be moved under public comment. Right now, they exist under open meeting. Oh. I think, okay, I'll move them, but I think they kind of started talking before you officially went into public comment, and that's why. So that Technically, like, okay, I, I, then I rescind that. I, I can talk about that. Move it. I think that's what happened. Got it. Yeah, actually, yeah, they kind of, yeah, they did it. Before. I think we just assumed we're in public comment and people started talking and then we're like, oh, wait, are we I, I, th I think you're right. right. Then we, we can leave them if that's more accurate. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter. That was it. I'll go ahead. Any other, any other comments on the minutes? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, it's got a second wind, it sounds like. No, 6A4 top line, town manager's report. Mr. Lashley noted on October 17th there will be a town symposium, not a down symposium. Oh, no, downtown, actually. Downtown. Oh, okay. A downtown symposium. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yep. That was it. Very good. Okay. Um, Wonderful. Any other comments? No. Uh, all, all in favor of oh. uh, the minutes? Sorry. <laughs> um, I, got yeah, oh, yeah. I was not present. <laughs> all right. Four, all right. Good. Four zero. Four zero. Um, a motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All Second. in favor? All right. This ends the meeting.